Okay, so very good morning to all of you, all the participants who have joined across the country uh, to witness uh, this uh, third day of our uh, one week program, refresher program on uh, the machine learning using Python. So we are all looking forward for a most uh, exciting uh, session today. And uh, that exciting session will be carried out by one of the renowned speaker uh, from the world, one of the renowned personality in the field of uh, computer science and engineering, that is Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya. So we welcome you on behalf of uh, Gunarak Dev Engineering College from the Department of uh, Computer Science and Engineering. Uh, we are extremely delighted uh, to see you, sir, uh, from Australia. Maybe I, can, I have to say good afternoon to you uh, because it's afternoon in Australia, I guess. So uh, good afternoon to Dr. Bhuya, sir. Dr. Bhuya, sir, am I audible? Sir, I'm audible. Kya Now it's okay. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. We can hear you, sir. We can hear you. Okay, perfect. No problem. All right, sir. All right, sir. Once again, we take this opportunity to welcome you, sir, um, to this uh, session, uh, uh, which you are going to deliver that new trends in cloud computing and its uh, application in uh, uh, deep or deep or machine learning. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, uh, let me introduce. Uh, I think there is no necessary to introduce uh, Dr. Bhuya, sir, but as a, a formality, we will introduce you. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya is a renowned, uh, very distinguished uh, professor and a director of cloud computing and distributed systems. That is a cloud's laboratory at the University of Melbourne, Australia. He's also serving as a founding CEO of Manjira Soft, a spin-off company uh, of the university commercializing its innovation in cloud computing. He has authored over 850 publications and seven textbooks, including Mastering Cloud Computing, published by Megra Hill, China, Mach China Machine Press, and Morgan Kaufman for India, Chinese and international markets, respectively. Dr. Buya is one of the highly cited authors in computer science and software engineering worldwide. Uh, with an H index 152, G index 332, and uh, one, one, uh, 12,400 plus citations. Dr. Boya is recognized as Web of Science, highly cited researcher for six consecutive years since 2016. IEEE Fellow and Scopus Researcher of the Year 2017 with Excellence in Innovative Research Award by Elsevier. He has been recognized as the best of, best of the world twice for research fields in computing systems in 2019 and software systems in 2021, as well as as lifetime achiever and superstar of research in engineering and computer science. 
discipline twice in 2019 and 2021 by the American Research Review. Recently, he received Research Innovation Award from IEEE Technical Committee on Services, Compu uh, Services Computing and Research Impact Award from IEEE Technical Committee on Cloud Computing. Software Technologies for Grid, Cloud and for Computing developed from uh, under Dr. Goya's leadership have gained rapid acceptance and are in use at several academic institutions and commercial enterprises in 50 plus countries around the world. Manjira Soft Aneka Cloud Technology developed under, the, under his leadership has received a first new product innovation award. He served as founding editor-in-chief of the IEEE transactions on cloud computing. He is currently serving as editor-in-chief of software that is practice and experience, a long-standing journal in the field established 50 plus years ago. For further information on Dr. Goya, please visit his uh, cyber home, www.goya.com. So, so on behalf of the computer science and engineering department of Gurunanak Dev Engineering College, we take this opportunity to welcome you, sir. And uh, uh, we are extremely delighted to see you, your presence, and we are very happy that you are delivering, uh, uh, you know, a lecture on new trends in cloud computing and its application in deep or machine learning. Over to Buya, sir, now. Thank you. Thank you. And thanks yes. for inviting me to be part of this. Uh, yes. 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 Sir, 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 Dr. Ravindra Clarker, sir, principal of Gunnarak Dev Engineering College, you'd like to address, sir, for one minute. Namaskar. Sound not coming. Right here, sir. No, I can't hear. Uh, can't hear. Sorry. You can hear me? But I can't hear from your side. Did they mute you? Maybe they muted you. But what? But for now, other... now, now it's on for all, sir. Ah, so I okay. think they were thinking about me. So therefore, uh, your principal uh, message we didn't hear. Now we can't hear. So maybe they can unmute everybody. Namaskar. This is a hungry coral vaccination landmark with your support. Ananji, sir, you unmute. Ananji, it is uh, muted, so you need to unmute.
Okay, it is, uh, um, you know, muted. Uh, sir. Uh, see, 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 there I can see. Sorry, was one. Okay. I'll make me a host. I will control it. Can you hear, sir? No. Yes. Hello. Am I audible, sir? Now. Yes. Yes. Sir, am I audible now? Yes. Yes, sir. So, very good morning, sir. Myself, Dr. Ravindra, Principal of Guru Nanak Engineering College, Bida, sir. Namaskar, sir. Namaskar. On behalf of Guru Nanak Engineering College management and faculty and all staff, I would like to welcome for this FDB program. So, at the same time, I would like to thank you for accepting our invitation. Thank you very much. Okay, so thank you very much. So, so look like your principal is uh, muted again. So that's all right. So you can hear me. Is that Dhananjay? So it will be good if one person is, uh, you know, unmuted. Uh, Yes, so you can um, you can hear me from my side. Hello, Dhananjay. Yes. 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 I think there is a big Hello. echo. Good morning, sir. Good morning, sir. I'm Dhananjay here. No so we will go ahead. Yes, sir, we can. We can. Okay. We can. Sir. Yeah, just keep, uh, uh, I need to check so you be. Um, now, do you see two slides or one slide from my side? Uh, sir, sir, your uh, screen, yeah, now now we can see one screen, sir, one screen. Okay, Innovative one solutions for cloud and edge computing. Okay, good. Only one screen? Okay. That's fine. Yeah, right, sir, right, sir. Thank you, sir. We will yes, go ahead. I'm muting now. Yes. I want one of you to keep your video on. You can mute, but keep video on. Okay, sir, we will do that. One video yeah. will be on. Keep only video on. So that way I know that uh, it's all working, intent working. Fine, sir. Fine, sir. Thank you, sir. Yeah, keep your video on. I can't see your video. You can mute, but keep your video on. Yes, keep the video on. Yeah, but mute it. Mute the audio, but video on. All right? Okay. So I'm starting. All right? Okay. So thank you. Thank you, um, our colleagues at uh, GNDU College of Engineering in Bidar for inviting me to be part of this faculty development program. So I'm very you know, happy to learn that uh, this event is happening in Bidar. Uh, having participants from many places uh, in India. Okay, so you know this topic chosen for this uh, our uh, 
FDP program, uh, this workshop is very relevant uh, in the context uh, that uh, machine learning is playing such an important role in so many areas. Of course, machine learning by itself may not be a um, big thing, but when you connect the machine learning along with uh, others, other technology and applications, uh, then it will enable creation of many interesting uh, services uh, that help make the world better. Okay, so in that context, we will discuss uh, today more about this how uh, cloud computing and computing supports uh, big data applications. And of course, big data applications mean like machine learning applications. So these machine learning applications are there in many domains in healthcare, in um, engineering, uh, in uh, many areas. We will see as we go along. So, but my talk primarily is about cloud and computing and how it helps uh, those applications like machine learning or big data applications. So here is the outline of uh, um, our uh, discussion today. So I will introduce you briefly, uh, you know, different computing patterns that emerge for a period of time. Then we will discuss about cloud computing in particular and uh, today's application and what are the new trends and the new challenges uh, so that we can look into new type of architecture for cloud computing. So then we will discuss, uh, you know, cloud application platform Kaneka. So how this can be used for building, uh, you know, um, machine learning applications in healthcare in different domain. So then we will uh, take a look at uh, so new trends in uh, Internet Things. Then discuss. Uh, again, further advances in computing, such as edge computing. So you probably heard about people talk about edge AI. So that is AI at the edge of the network, AI at the cloud. That is, when we say AI, it means machine learning or deep learning approaches happening in this computing system uh, to support uh, applications. Then conclude at the end. So this is the plan. So we will uh, discuss uh, these aspects for next uh, 60 minutes or one hour. Uh, then I will uh, give sufficient time for uh, any um, uh, attendees to ask any questions and uh, yeah, so that's the plan. So now moving forward, so there are many waves of computing. And if you see historically from 1960s to you know 2030, so at least during last 50 years, we saw many advances in computing. So earlier in uh, during 60s, we had mainframe computers. Uh, then all the way, then in, uh, in 1995 or so, the so-called World Wide Web, World Wide Web became very popular. Uh, then of course, under the name of web, uh, we saw advances such as web services that enables creation of service-oriented applications. So when you are building a, a new application, so you don't need to tightly couple them. Instead, you can loosely couple through web services. So that was a new innovation. Then of course, the computing was a bit harder. If you are a small enterprise, a medium enterprise in a place like these are in other places, uh, you need to buy hardware servers and all very expensive proportion. So therefore, there was an exploration to look into how can we make computing as a utility? So just like we have electricity as a utility, similarly, computing as a utility. So that means there'll be some kind of third party, uh, you know, solution provider. So they will uh, provide these services to you on a pay as you go basis rather than buying upfront. So you don't need to buy a facility. You can just rent a facility. Similarly, the computing also bringing, uh, making that computing as a rentable service. So that is made possible through cloud computing. So cloud computing during the last 10 years has been very, very popular. Numerous applications have been developed and those applications are now we are using uh, regularly. Then this Internet of Things. So if we want to interconnect physical world and the digital world. So this is made possible by Internet of Everything. Normally when we say Internet, it means networks of computers. Internet of Things means everything become part of Internet. So that means the physical world and digital world get interconnected. So many interesting applications can be uh, made as a result. So during um, actually last, uh, you know, um, 
10, 12 years. Uh, so many advances have taken place. Now we talk about cloud computing and edge computing in particular. And what we see is the huge business capacity. So that means the huge potential to advance this. And uh, machine learning uh, plays a important role. So before that, uh, you know, you see these advances in computing. Earlier, it was more and more driven by big scientific uh, applications uh, and big military application. But now the advances in computing are driven by big population application. So even in machine learning in particular, people talk about predicting trends, finding objects for security application, uh, you know, uh, uh, what is popular today? So these are uh, more population oriented applications or how is, you know, uh, impact of spread of this uh, virus uh, would be. So these are all machine learning techniques are used. So this is where the newer, newer technologies are uh, created to support them. And coming to uh, cloud computing, so as I said, cloud computing allows you to make computing as a utility, just like electricity utility, water as a utility, and then telephone network as a utility. Similarly, computing also becomes a utility that is made possible through cloud computing. So in this environment, in cloud computing, offering services to end users on a subsistent basis, so you have users who subscribe to services, and actually this cloud service is something created by some uh, independent vendor, and these vendor capabilities are available somewhere in the network. We as a consumer know it on where we are. We subscribe to the capability, use it and pay for what we consume. So this is a pay for uh, as you go model. You might subscribe to a service provided by one of the provider, but actually uh, that doesn't mean that that provider does everything for you. So they may be using service company for other providers and uh, delivering service to end users. So this is how you know, cloud models is uh, built. So now let us see what are the applications that are enabled by this cloud computing. So there are many. So many of these we already know and we are, uh, we are using them. Say for example, the traditional science and business applications like CRM and ERP, they are running on cloud. Then uh, look at uh, like software system like Zoom or even this what we are using today, WebEx. WebEx is actually cloud-based video conference software. You can see VLR in different countries. Uh, you know, we are able to interact reasonable quality of inter uh, you know, real time. It is able to show because this application is hosted in some remote cloud services. And these cloud services are in multiple places and simply different operations are provided places to give us a feel of uh, better quality interaction. So that is uh, Zoom or a WebEx a video conferencing, which is cloud-based video conferencing application. Similarly, like Twitter. Twitter, we all know, heard about, and people these days talk about uh, micro missing service. This is running on a cloud. Then the Facebook, everyone knows. Facebook is a cloud-based application. Why? Because at any point, this Facebook is used by millions of users. At given point, at this point, you see how many users are there, millions of them worldwide, they are using it. And this is hosted in the cloud and a high scale, large scale computer capability that distributed and then able to support large number of users. Then of course, within this social network, you can, you can do you know, machine learning too. So this company do much learning to find out what kind of things are popular, uh, maybe to find out what is the best thing to advertise at this moment. So, so that is how these companies are using machine learning in case of Facebook. And there is some other system called uh, Dropbox, is a cloud-based storage service. So you can uh, rent a storage, rent a uh, disk storage in a cloud. So that is a cloud-based storage service. So like this, we see every day, you know, we are not using. Uh, clouds, that is a good thing. Then uh, there are many more cloud-based applications, not just Facebook, so but uh, YouTube and uh, many others. In one minute, what happens on internet? So millions and millions of operations are taking place in terms of huge bandwidth flow, but also uh, content flow. But uh, if you see what operations are taking place in, uh, for example, uh, Let's say in YouTube, as I said, uh, millions of users, actually 1.4 million users are, you know, scrolling the content uh, in this and then uh, uh, on Twitter, uh, more than 200,000 messages are, uh, you know, people are writing within a minute. So huge, and all these applications are running in a cloud. There is a good success of cloud computing. In fact, the more the operations are taking place, more opportunity for uh, you to apply machine learning in these systems. 
Why? Because you want to predict trends. You want to find out what is popular uh, so that you can uh, advertise the right thing or you can plan the uh, things better. So this is uh, the importance of uh, you know, cloud computing. And meanwhile, there are mean, uh, many new trends in cloud in uh, you know technology. So something like Internet of Things, we'll discuss as we go along more. There's a big data. Big data means with this Internet of Things, the sensors are deployed everywhere. They're capturing so much of data. And then massive amount of data in, in gigabytes, gigabytes of data. And what do you do with the data? Unless you process the data in timely manner. And this is where machine learning techniques are used to process this data to uh, predict what is happening in the system, what is happening in the world through big data analytics. So then uh, coming to blockchain, many of you heard about blockchain. Blockchain generally associated with uh, digital currency like bitcoins. Uh, plus, of course, uh, AI. AI means machine learning and deep learning. So these are you know, very popular. And all of these are actually creating a bunch of for further using cloud for those applications. And then now, you know, so this uh, COVID-19 management, healthcare, its impact on different areas. This has been a big issue. You know, it seems almost uh, last year, December, I mean, just a month ago, we thought this virus is okay, will be disappearing. But I see that again, it is appearing in different variants. So that means a uh, uh, big challenge. But anyway, good news is that the world is operating still. It is made possible by cloud computing networks. And we are having this FDP thanks to cloud computing, cloud hosted application like WebEx or Zoom or any other software system, they are hosted in the cloud and we are interconnected as a result. So that is the you know, really success of uh, uh, cloud computing. Okay. Uh, now, um, of course, this is something we all know that this uh, nine COVID-19 pandemic has been causing a lot of trouble. But however, the businesses are running reasonably. Education, remote education is happening. Uh, the economy is running, uh, especially uh, like e-commerce uh, based uh, shopping and the delivery. So these are happening because of this cloud computing. So therefore, I think we must appreciate what cloud computing is doing for the world, especially during the difficult time. So that is a good thing about it. And coming to this machine learning or AI, and you see the applications of this are in so many areas. So um, you might have already learned about in healthcare. So healthcare is very commonly used. Then uh, you know in natural language processing. Uh, then in uh, in security, in uh, security. In security, for example, detecting object. So who is this person, for example, in this location? When you have a images captured, then identifying the person, the surveillance application, then uh, recommended system. Uh, like that, there are so financial system. There are so many, uh, even the education, uh, predicting how students are progressing uh, in their education. So all these applications are there. Then moving to robotics, for example, even the robotics and uh, is uh, 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 so many applications uh, of uh, you know uh, cloud computing or machine learning. So now this machine learning and cloud computing have become like a you know joint uh, twins because machine learning requires a lot of compute power, and who can provide cloud provides it. So if there is a marriage of cloud computing and uh, machine learning, it is much better. So uh, these are like a made for each other. So cloud for uh, machine learning, machine learning for cloud, and then many applications. So it is very timely. So that is in brief. Now let's start going more deeper into cloud computing. Oh, I just pressed. Uh, Okay, so now let us go deeper into uh, cloud computing. So, if uh, to understand technically, what is it actually? So the cloud will have like what we call data center, 
what is data center? Data center is primarily a collection of servers that are interconnected. If you have got say say 100 servers that are interconnected, these servers can be used in parallel to speed up your computation in machine learning or any application. So this collection of integral servers uh, that are interconnected and these are made available to users as a virtual machines. When you rent a computer in the cloud, there is no physical machine named after you. What they rent is a virtual machine. So you make a requirement of your, your computer requirement in the cloud. Accordingly, a virtual machine is created. So this, if you say, oh, I need a virtual machine with uh, two gigahertz of uh, memory and 1.5 megahertz of uh, speed, uh, like this much of uh, you know uh, storage, network capability, all this you define accordingly. The cloud system allocates, and that is called a virtual machine. And this virtual machine is mapped to physical machine, depending upon where you are. Say, for example, for me, I'm, I'm, I joined this Webex. It created an instance. Possibly that that virtual machine is located in Australia. For some of you, so when the virtual machine is created, it is not located in Australia. For you, it is located possibly in Bangalore or somewhere. Thereby, you are close to it. So close to you. So that is how the system actually works. Virtual machine mapping to physical machine because this is a distributed uh, environment. So the resources are distributed physically, geographically distributed. So they are placed in different part of the world. And if you see any cloud service provider, whether the Microsoft or Google or IBM or Indian cloud service providers, you see they have this physically distributed uh, uh, infrastructure in different uh, major places around the world. So this way we can serve users better. So when the request comes into cloud computing environment, virtual machine is created on that virtual machine application running. And obviously with time, the demand of the application can increase. So the number of users increases. You know, initially you start with say 10 users, but over a period of time, it can be 1000 users. When you have 1000 users, and if you're serving using one virtual machine, the system quality will be very low, the application service quality. So therefore, you need to dynamically add extra capability to your uh, system. That is by dynamically adding extra virtual machine to your, uh, your application system, then application can expand and then use that. And this expansion can be within one location or across multiple locations. When you have users coming from geographically distributed, like this event, so I'm in Australia, many of you within India, so within India, some of you are in Bida, some of you may be other places in India. So how do we serve them? They are duly distributed. Then, uh, so this is how it works. So this property of cloud is called elasticity. Elastic. So some people call it as a elastic computing. And of course, when the demand on your application decreases, then you reduce the number of resources that are necessary. So that is shrinking. And this is very common in machine learning. In machine learning, depending upon uh, the application of the machine learning, if this is used in real time, uh, you know, object detection, uh, detection of uh, people uh, in the uh, that are moving on a road, if the camera is put in, so there, depending upon the demand, number of resources needed can be varied. So this is how it actually works in the cloud system, and of course, which also means you need to develop your applications that are designed for this purpose, applications that can harness the power of cloud. So that means you need to have a very special uh, you know, a way of creating application. So that is the next focus. Actually, by having this uh, approach uh, or property of cloud computing where resources can be dynamically added or removed, so you can use resources more efficiently and you can minimize the cost of computation and also you can minimize the energy consumption. Because this cloud computing has become so popular, Worldwide, there are so many places this uh, cloud systems are created and deployed. And because of that, the cloud systems are consuming enormous amount of electricity. And here is the graph that shows you amount of energy consumed by different countries uh, per, year, per year. And you can see US and China and all, and here we see India. But this cloud computer is consuming more energy than India, entire India. So this is a big problem. So that means you should also think of building applications very efficient. The algorithm, machine learning algorithm should be efficient. So therefore, if you have very good skills in uh, algorithms and able to create very optimal one, so that is highly appreciated. So these are our other, uh, you know, uh, bigger things.
So now let us think of how can we build applications that can harness the power of cloud? How can we build machine learning applications that can harness the power of cloud? So I will soon give you uh, first uh, technical solution and then application solution. First, uh, to build these applications that can harness the power of cloud, you need a cloud application engine or a platform. And one such platform is called Aneka. So this Aneka is a cloud application platform we have ourselves developed at Melbourne University, and we have commercialized this technology through Manjra Soft. And those of you in Bidar, you know Manjra, correct? So this our company Manjra Soft is inspired, uh, named after Manjira Manjra River. So Manjra River is just around uh, 15 kilometers from Bidar. So from, uh, for example, uh, from perhaps from Guru Dora, you go towards uh, Aura Taluka, so you will find uh, Manjra River from around 14, 15 kilometers from uh, uh, you know, uh, Bidar. Officially, we say 15 kilometers. I think from the Dambedkar Chok to the Bidar is uh, out, uh, I mean that uh, Manjra River is 15 kilometers. Anyway, so this is the company uh, that has this product called Aneka. So Aneka is a cloud application platform. And this Aneka comes with two key components. The first one is software development kit. When we say software development kit, it contains uh, various application programming interfaces and the tools that you can use to build applications rapidly. Application can be machine learning, or it can be some uh, healthcare, or it can be some engineering application, or it can be smart city application. Many of those, we will take a look at few of those uh, soon. So, Aneka supports what is called as you know thread model, task model, and map reduce. These are the, some of the popular ways of creating cloud applications. So those of you who know, say for example, Java programming. So there, there is something called Java th threads, multi-threading in Java. If you know that multi-threading in Java, you can easily do same thing in Aneka. But Aneka threads are allows you to run across multiple servers and distribute it. So this way you can run your application faster and you can support large number of users of that application. And once you develop this application, you can deploy the application on private cloud or on a public cloud. And when we say public cloud, there are multiple club public cloud service provider like Microsoft is one, Google is other, IBM is another. Like there are many of those. In Aneka, we design in such a way that you build your application once and you can deploy in, either the, in, a, in any of these clouds in a seamless manner. So that is made possible by my second component. So first one is SDK, second is machine learning. Okay, so this is how our Aneka system has been designed. And this is the world first technology providing uh, such uh, capability. And how is this made possible world first? So this is made possible because of very special unique architecture uh, the unique approach, uh, method, uh, methodology, or uh, technique that Aneka offers. So within Aneka core engine, we call what is called as containers, and these containers contain uh, has foundation services, and these foundation services are used to create thread model, task model, and map reduce. Like these people can innovate newer and newer models and build application and deploy in private or public cloud. Okay, so that is more in uh, depth. Of course, you can uh, see some of our uh, books and such paper to go in deeper. So I just want to impress that, you know, this is a tool that can be used for innovating in uh, easily in new things in computer science. And this Aneka technology has been around during the last 10 years. So many advances uh, are done within Aneka. So you can see initially we started as a way of supporting simple band feeding application with what a product time. New and new application came into picture to support the requirement. We made many advances, and you can see more recently the the more popularity of AI, artificial intelligence, machine learning, deep learning, IoT. So we have designed this Aneka extended to support those applications. So this is also important when you build develop a technology. Our software technology will be constantly enhanced, and new innovation need to be made to meet requirements of newer applications uh, that uh, come up uh, with time. Uh, you know, um, as we uh, progress. So that is about the Aneka versions. Then I mentioned that once you build your application, you can deploy on any platform, any cloud infrastructure. So uh, how is that made possible? That is made possible through special Aneka software plugins. 
Aneka has adapters because each of these cloud infrastructure, they have their own way of, uh, you know, uh, creating and deploying application. So we want to hide that from end users. So we created software adapters for each of these. And then this way you use Aneka, you don't need to worry about the low level differences between different providers. Not only that, you can run your application across multiple distributed uh, clouds. And at the same time, you can use Azure cloud and also Amazon cloud, for example, at the same time, a Yen application, part of the application uh, task will run here, part of the application in another place. So this is what it makes very, very unique uh, technology in the world. And right now we support uh, many of those that are used to build uh, or provide uh, public cloud services, whether they are Windows, Azure, Microsoft, or from um, VMware or from OpenStack. So this is the way we do. So this way you can actually harness the power of Ravi, public and multiple public clouds for your application. Now, what are those applications? So let us try to take a look at some of these applications coming from different uh, you know, uh, countries, different places and different domains, different areas. So first, for example, from China, uh, China Railways uh, Corporation. They are using an ACA for high speed design of, uh, you know, fast design of high speed trains. So we will discuss. Then in India, ISRO, Indian Space Research Organization, ISRO. So they are using it for satellite image processing. ISRO means launching a lot of satellites for different purposes. And what do satellites do? They capture images in the space, in the, uh, in the different planets. If they send it to moon or a Mars, wherever. So the images are coming. Find out what is there. Either a water in uh, moon or is a water in uh, Mars like this. Uh, what kind of composition of material there? That's what people are doing. Anyway, those images can be analyzed, find out uh, some interesting things. So that you have to do in a timely fashion. So that is what uh, ISRO does. Then Washington State University in the United States, they use it for you know medical data analytics. When you have medical data, so medical data obviously likely to have you know um, uh, privacy requirement the data is captured and you don't want to run and analyze the data wherever in public cloud perhaps you have privacy requirement oh i don't want to share uh, my data i want to only process in my hospital cloud in which case within an acre there is a approach where uh, these people washington State university people are able to plug in uh, that policy to an acre a machine learning policy actually the machine learning policy that classifies medical records into sensitive or non-sensitive. And the sensitive medical records are processed in a hospital cloud. Non-sensitive ones are presented to public cloud. So that is the use of an ACA for hospital, uh, you know, medical application. Like that in Punjab, uh, you know, uh, Harper University use it for uh, agriculture as a service application. Then in IIT Delhi, uh, Industry of Technology in Delhi, they use it for, um, for what we call object detection in a classroom, you know, uh, I will talk about those. And also we applied this Aneka to uh, what is called COVID-19 Open Research Data Challenge. So this Open Research Data Challenge is all about analyzing various COVID-19 related publication to find out what is the progress in the field. So let me discuss some of these, how they are actually enabled and deployed on cloud using Aneka. First from China. So this uh, low quality design, say engineering application. So when you are designing high speed trains, there are many design scenarios. And so these scenarios are analyzed to find out which is the best one. So they do using software called Maya. And they were doing this on a four core server, this four core server. So this four core server. Uh, so this four core server. When they were using, so this was taking anywhere between 24 hours to 40, I mean, uh, 80 hours for a small scale uh, scenario, small scale uh, scenario. So waiting for one day just for result is too much. So what did they do to solve that problem? They have set up a private uh, enterprise cloud using an acre software uh, by using several uh, machines within their office. Then we have a, another tool called Design Explorer. So this Design Explorer allows you to compose this application as a SPMD, uh, single program multiple data application, and run it on this private cloud. And by doing that, so this single server took 80 hours, the same thing they are able to do it in two hours. 
So that means, so this analytics on a single server takes uh, four days. On this couple of 30 servers within uh, using Aneka, they are able to do it in two hours. So there is a big uh, time reduction in discovery. Okay, so now sometimes you might say, oh, two hours is a lot. So there is an emergency. I need result in 10 minutes. What do I do? The local, your, uh, the resources within your uh, college takes two hours, but you want answer in 10 minutes. So within Aneka, fortunately, we have approach where you can specify. So my deadline is equal to 10 minutes. I want to use extra resource from public cloud in Bangalore. Other computers in Bangalore. Uh, <laughs> if I want to rent extra resource from public cloud, I need to pay for it also. So then you can say, okay, budget is equal to 500 rupees. Given the deadline budget, so you set Aneka is able to use multiple clouds from your location, other places, and do within the deadline. Okay. <clears throat> so that was. Uh, Application from China. Now, let us take a look at healthcare. So, why do we need cloud for healthcare? And how can we enable um, healthcare application, which is essentially some kind of AI techniques? Okay, so here there is something called sensor. So, this sensor can be part of watch that capture your uh, you know, heartbeat data um, or ECG data, electrocardiogram analytic data. And the data comes, say you can from your mobile phone, you can send it to cloud. And here is application ECG analysis, data analysis as a service. So this is the application running, and it's running on top of Aneka, Aneka on this uh, public cloud of Amazon. So here are the users. As usual in healthcare application, the number of users, people using the service can change. Sometime 500 users, sometime 1000 users, sometime 200 users, sometimes 50 users, it can change. So, and of course, the quality of service requirement. So, those in emergency. So, they might say, here is my data, ECG data. Please analyze this data, give me answer within five minutes. For that, I will pay two rupees. Somebody says, I am not in hurry. Analyze this data, give me answer tomorrow morning at 10, 10 a.m. in 24 hours time. For that, I'll only pay maybe you know, two cents. Like the different users are coming in. So Aneka is able to allocate right set of resources, capabilities, so those different requests to make sure that you know the requests are served as for the requirement, and then of course cost is minimized. So this is another market strategy. This is very, very important. And all of you know, you know, if you want to go to say from uh, Bidar to Bangalore, how can you go? You can Take a bus that will possibly take some 12 hours. Or you can uh, go to uh, take a plane from Air Force. Uh, if you are a, a very important person, you take a plane from uh, Indian Air Force in Bidar and fly to Bangalore. So they possibly take you to Bangalore within uh, two hours. Correct? But obviously, when you take a plane from Bidar to Bangalore, it will be costly. It might cost you some, uh, you know, lakh rupees uh, if it is just uh, rented for you, charter flight. Otherwise, uh, you take a bus, KSRTC, they will possibly charge you 200 rupees or 250. Correct? You can read there. So, but here, uh, the timeliness versus the price. You are making decision. So, in the computing system, can we also do the same way? We just define the requirement. The system should do for us, and this is what this is the utility concept that we have supported in Aneka. This makes it very unique and world first. Okay, this is again we have shown it demonstrated in many places. You can see so public demonstration, the data captured uh, from uh, you see the data by connecting sensor to the whole hand, then sent to mobile phone, then sent to cloud where processing is done, and it just came back. And of course, you can see these graphs. So these graphs uh, or it can person health status or how, uh, what to do uh, and all can be recommended uh, to the patient. So then we can take care of our health better. Okay, 
So this is uh, now such application can be created for remote health monitoring. Soon I will talk about remote health monitoring. And now with this COVID-19 accelerating uh, this approach, uh, you know, realization for remote health monitoring, the people, you know, the hospitals cannot cope up with so many people going to the hospital. And this is not only in India, but also in Australia. So this, uh, what is that, uh, Omicron, the new variant of COVID-19. So it is, seems to be growing fast everywhere. Here in Melbourne, Australia, in our, within just the city where I am, it seems, uh, you know, every day some 10,000, 20,000 people are detected. Uh, and of course, it is causing a lot of problem. And hospital cannot really have all of them. What can you do? Perhaps somebody who is serious, maybe give them some kind of uh, instrument that see how they're doing and let them uh, monitor, be monitored at the home itself, where the data can be analyzed in different uh, places in the cloud. So this is all uh, remote health monitoring. So we'll see more of this uh, as we go along with another uh, technology. So here is again uh, coming uh, to IIT Delhi application on deep learning. So this is a part of uh, machine learning. So in deep learning means what? Say for example, for object detection. So if you have a you know the camera, camera fitted in many places in a classroom, in computer labs, on roads, in temple. These days the cameras are everywhere, correct? Smart city. They're putting camera in uh, traffic signal and everywhere to first see how the traffic flow is happening. Is there any trouble happening? So these cameras are capturing video and the photos. You need to detect in real time what's happening there. And what is the technique used? This deep learning method is used. That is machine learning method. So there is a program called deep.py, but if you do it on one computer, it will take uh, two hours. But you want to do it real time. Real time means as it happens very rapidly. So this is where the cloud is used. So uh, this IT Delhi researchers created Aneka, they use Aneka for creating this uh, cloud version of deep learning. And as a result, as lots of uh, images and streams are coming, data stream, image streams, and they are processed uh, rapidly on a private cloud or a public cloud like this as necessary and classify and detect the object in real time. And here you can see, for example, a student lab. So it is able to detect how many monitors are there, how many keyboards are there, how many mouse are there, how many students are there or not there. So these are very useful. So this is the way you know uh, we were able to we were able to apply uh, machine learning and use an acre for this purpose. So this is uh, machine learning. Now another machine learning for COVID-19 research papers analysis. You know during last uh, almost uh, two years, more than two fifty thousand research papers are published in the context of COVID-19. And so these research papers are coming from medical researchers, from computer science researchers, from economics researchers, from social ethics. All kinds of people are writing research papers in the context of COVID. For example, what if you want to find out what is the progress of vaccine? Which vaccine is more effective for Omicron? Right? And you want to find out so many papers are there, 250,000 papers. Who can go through them? Nobody can. So therefore, we here we applied machine learning method, and based on your preference, it will go through all the papers and identify the most top three, top five papers that will provide you right answer. And you can see here. So these are uh, Aneka technology with multiple compute nodes and the Aneka master, and the data. This COVID Cora, this COVID open research data. So all this data is publicly available, and that data analysis we created a took the raw data and then uh, created multiple machine learning tasks, see ML model, machine learning models, this is ML, machine learning models. So they are able to you know, run and train, then uh, you know, identify whatever trends very quickly. So this is helping high fast discovery of uh, information of interest. That is, you can perform machine learning task in parallel using an ACA on cloud and do in a timely manner. And here is the simple graph of how much time it takes to process. So if you process, uh, say, for example, say 50,000 papers on a single server, it takes something like uh, 20 minutes. Same thing you can do in three, four minutes in five servers. Okay, so like this, 
So we Anika will help you to spread your computation across as necessary and do it faster. So this is another example of uh, you know uh, using Anika for you know for healthcare or for machine learning application. Uh, in this case, it happens to be COVID research uh, data analysis. Okay, so and of course you can further classify, like you know uh, these papers. How many of those are published by Australian researchers? And within uh, Australia, how many of those are published by Melbourne University researchers? Like that, you can classify also apart from uh, specific, but you can. So we provide all kinds of presentation results uh, through this uh, mining. Okay, so this can help a uh, lot to see how things are progressing. Okay, so this Aneka software technology, you know, I can go deeper and deeper. I will give you pointers to a paper, uh, I mean, a book actually, uh, you can go through. So this Aneka software technology is commercialized through Mandra Soft. Uh, I already mentioned Mandra Soft is a spin up company from Melbourne University. And uh, again, if you've forgotten, if you join late, so Manjra Soft, Manjra is the name of a river in near Bidar. And uh, I'm sure all of you are drinking Manjra water. Okay, so if water is coming in your tap in Bidar, it is most likely that the water is coming from Manjra River. Okay, or if you drink water from well in Bidar, it will be salty, very salty, unless you go to Gurunara Kajara. Okay, go to Gunnarak Zara, they will get a very tasty water. But the the beer, the rest of the beer, when you have a well or a anything, is very salty. Okay, so I know personally. So some of you can also find out. Okay, so this is named after Manjara River. So manjarasub.com from where you can download this Aneka 5.0 latest version and explore. So many uh, students uh, across the world have downloaded and did interesting work. And of course, there are many um, universities. Uh, uh, in in fact, uh, like VTU uh, at master level, they introduced a subject in cloud computing and uh, some anek exercises are there. And uh, of course, good news is that in India, uh, definitely many universities uh, throughout the country uh, have been teaching uh, subject on cloud computing. And here I've just listed a few, uh, you know, uh, throughout the country. And of course, many of these people have um, established. Uh, a lab using Aneka, and they're using this for teaching uh, hands on experience or a lab uh, to learn cloud application programming. So, this way, students uh, not only learn theory but also practice. So, here I would say, for example, in Karnataka itself, the, uh, here are some colleges that have set up uh, Aneka based lab, for example, the MS Rama Institute of Technology in Bangalore, PS Institute of, uh, they, they call now PS University. Earlier they used to call PSIT, PSIT. Uh, then uh, NIE, uh, Mysore, NIE National Institute of Engineering, Mysore, uh, RBC. So you can see there are uh, MC that uh, I think Malnad College of Engineering, Hassan. So like this, uh, and of course NIT, Karnataka, Suratkal, Mangalore. So and uh, also that uh, MIT, Manipal Institute of Technology, uh, Manipal uh, near Udupi. So there are many premier institutes. I of course, uh, very close to be there. Say, for example, University of Hyderabad. So they have, so like that. So many, many places around. Uh, that is in uh, Karnataka, I need to be there. Then, of course, you go to, for example, Punjab, many places in Punjab. And then you can go to, say, for example, Rajasthan or all the way to the other side, northeast, like uh, Meghalaya, you know, Meghalaya. So and then and Bengal. So West Bengal, actually. So West Bengal University of Science and Technology. So so they have an based lab, and uh, you can see happening everywhere. So so uh, so that is other thing. So then uh, of course uh, there is a book also mastering cloud computing. So they are using it for teaching. So this uh, happening across the country. So that is from education perspective. So I just want to encourage that, for example, if you become very expert in machine learning. You can say, why don't you just set up a an Aneka based small setup within, say, your college and then uh, do cloud enabled machine learning? So, this way you will become extra, not just a machine learning, but also cloud ready, uh, you know, cloud ready machine learning uh, researcher, a machine learning programmer, machine learning software engineer, whatever you like to call, or a data scientist, another title. 
Okay, so something I would like to encourage you to go through. Okay, so that is crowd based approach. Then let me a little bit go a little more deeper into this Internet of Things and then uh, talk about new type of application. Now, this Internet of Things, we are no Internet, we are using Internet today to connect you know, us, and we have this thing happening. So, this Internet of Things is essentially extending networks of computers to networks of everything. The physical world everywhere, you know, sensors, camera, everything become part of internet. Okay, so by 2030, it seems like several hundreds of hundreds of billions of objects become part of this internet. And as a result, this is expected to be a big uh, business opportunity also. So, and of course, this IoT adoption is happening around the world everywhere. So much of deployment. So this IoT and uh, why so important? So because this allows you to create a smart world, data-driven, IoT data-driven smart world. And applications are numerous like smart home, smart agriculture, you know, smart cities, smart transport system. Say for example, smart agriculture is even more important in place like weather. So normally, you know, uh, rain, heavy rain at once, then after that, no rain. But you want agriculture to happen smoothly. For that, you need water. Correct? How much uh, water Mother River can supply? Especially in that area, people are simply growing sugarcane. You go to that uh, all around that Mother River. Only things that are growing is sugarcane, sugarcane, sugarcane. But the people, you know, uh, so much of water is wasted there. So they just simply turn on the motor and leave it and go home. And uh, no, no efficient use of water at all. So you can go for smart agriculture where water resources are used efficiently. And this is very, very important for a country like India. Water is a scarce resource, is a precious, like a gold. So we need to use water precious, uh, with the waste need to be avoided. So uh, in India, it seems, you know, 60% of water is wasted. Then that is why we have drought problem, this problem, that problem, all kinds of problem. Not only in the Bidar, in Mysore also, two, three years ago, no water in Mysore. If you go to Chamani Hills, you know, only fire, correct? Uh, all the hill uh, trees are uh, pretty much dry. So generally people think in Mysore, no problem, only Bidar is a drought, but it's become reverse. So therefore, the water usage need to be efficient. Then even the Kaveri water near Mysore need to be used efficiently. Uh, so this is where we need smart agriculture with simple uh, you know, moisture sensor deployed in multiple places, then they can use water irrigation very smoothly, very better than that way we can uh, save this, uh, we can avoid this wastage of water. You know, like this, there are many, this, now they talk about a smart transport system, driverless car, the future cars today is okay. But I think in, uh, in, uh, in maybe in uh, 20 years time, if you land in uh, say Hyderabad airport, Let's say I want to now go to, you know, Gurunanak Jaran Bidar. That's it. So then car will drive you. You don't need a driver. Correct? You just get into the car, take me to Gurunanak Jara in Bidar. So the system will drive you automatically. So for that means there will be uh, various cameras, the sensors that see how the road condition is and plan and plan, plan accordingly and then take you all the way from, uh, say, Hyderabad to Bidar. Uh, in an efficient uh, manner, uh, hopefully without any accident, anything safely reaching you to the uh, Gurnanak Sala. So this is kind of application, smart uh, transport systems without driver. So the driverless cars. So this is where IoT is uh, coming to picture. Then obviously machine learning also comes into picture. Why machine learning here? For example, I want to go from that Hyderabad to be there. If there is somewhere, there is some kind of block. What do you do? You need to uh, you need to somehow you know take alternate route. First, you need to be able to detect what is happening in the world, either in a block. Because if the traffic is not moving, uh, oh, it looks like you predict, looks like this is not going for right. So I have to alternate plan. So all these techniques uh, can be used for machine learning will play a part role too. Now for this application, what is the solution model, computing solution model? The first solution model is cloud-based, which we discussed. What is the problem with the uh, Oh, what did I do? Change. 
I press the Online. Yeah, so the slide is that. So the first model is cloud based, but if you push all this IoT data to cloud, what happens? The, uh, the internet gets clogged. And then the response time from cloud may be very slow. So for real time applications like smart transport, smart city, smart farming. So this uh, pushing all the data to cloud is not a good idea. So therefore, why don't we use resources at the edge of the network? This is the cloud, a remote cloud, and the resource at the edge of the network. That is called edge computing. And using some time resources at the edge, and the cloud is called for computing. So this is the new model. So very similar to cloud, but the new model. So looking at this, essentially, <coughs> so there are <coughs> so there are various IoT devices targeting different applications. Uh, instead of sending it to cloud, you can uh, use the resources uh, in the nearby the data source. Then uh, that is called edge or farm. Then accordingly support application <coughs> to support this uh, uh, integration of uh, edge and the cloud. So we recently developed uh, the new framework for uh, integrating um, all this. Uh, <coughs> So, what I, am I able to share? Is my screen okay? Is visible or not? Yes, sir, your screen. Sir, your screen. Okay. So, um, let me see. Uh, I pressed. Uh, Okay, good. I pressed one of the visible interface that changed it to other model. All right, so so for this purpose, we developed this public software that allows you to use edge resources and also cloud resources in a seamless manner. And this Fabbus is a new framework. And the latest version of Fabbus is created in Python. I think this uh, FDP is also talking about Python. You know, Python is another language. So uh, the first version of Fabbus is created in Java. Another one we created in Python. So doesn't matter. You can use any language to implement the technology. So, but this is our new uh, software framework for integrating edge and uh, cloud resources and necessary. So, so here like IoT device like healthcare, oximeter captures the ECG data, then uh, a small gateway program running on a mobile phone, then send it to nearby uh, edge broker that can use edge resources or remote cloud resources. <laughs> Much more easier to understand uh, this through uh, application. So in healthcare, as, as I mentioned earlier, so IoT and healthcare are made for each other type, and there are numerous applications. Uh, for example, remote health monitoring or health management. <laughs> ah, this remote health monitoring, like ECG, glucose level monitoring, blood pressure monitoring. So there are many IoT sensors that can be used to sense this in real time and analyze and then recommend, uh, give solution to the user. So here is an example of uh, applying it for sleep apnea analysis is an application. So here is the ECG uh, device. You can connect to a finger, the data collected, and then there is a HealthKeeper app running on a mobile phone. So this HealthKeeper app uh, that we created can take this data and send it to a edge or cloud. So where actual processing is done, then after that it is able to tell you the situation of this person. Is disease severity, is it mild or a normal or a emergency? So it constantly monitors and give a recognition on what to do. So this is a simple example of uh, you know integration. And we have shown it here. So here is the Raspberry Pi. 
Uh, Raspberry Pi actually when you buy it is like a small Macbox size computer. So Raspberry Pi, this is a small, it can run a Linux or uh, Linux for example. So it's a small, very small uh, Macbox size computer. Uh, so this can be anywhere at our house or in a signaling system anywhere. Very simple, if you put in a small box. So, and that can analyze uh, or it can send to cloud. So we're able to integrate this oximeter, iPhone and uh, mobile. Uh, then of course, Raspberry Pi or Aneka means if you are integrating with the cloud. So it uses, uh, Fogbus uses Aneka to harness the power of cloud. So this is how we have shown this uh, work, uh, you know. And as I said, uh, the latest version of same Aneka technology uh, is implemented using uh, Python. And there we use something called microservices. You know, microservices like uh, uh, it's a new approach to software engineering. So those who want to learn more about it, you can explore. But uh, so we created such a system for uh, integration of edge and cloud, and this is the new version. Concepts the same thing. And that is all practical thing what we discussed so far. Like if somebody is doing a research, uh, like a PhD, so they may not have so much of expertise and time and energy to build complete uh, ideas in practice and demonstrate their research. Very difficult. So if they are just working on a specific technique, so they can use our simulator. So this is called iFoxim, is a simulator for modeling and simulation. For cloud computing, we have similar simulator called CloudSim. CloudSim is a simulator used by, you know, thousands of researchers in more than 50 countries around the world. So they use and also similarly iFoxim also. So this is for PhD people. So you can model and simulate uh, applications and model and simulate environment. Then from that you can find out what is the best policy for management of resource. So that kind of algorithmic analysis similarly can be used. So um, okay. Next final one more. These days we, we hear a lot about drones, correct? So normally drones mean sometime. Of course, drones can also be used for agriculture. Uh, drones are also used in the military application. Um, or even the uh, package delivery. So in some of the countries, companies want to deliver. So you say, oh, this is because of COVID-19, I'm not able to come to your restaurant and pick up. You put an order uh, and then they will uh, give one package to drone and drone will come and deliver in front of your house, correct? So for example, that kind of demonstration people are doing. Anyway, we didn't do that one. Instead, we did something much more better. So during this lockdown time last year in March, uh, uh, you know, uh, country was really locked down, uh, like in place like Noida in Delhi, in Delhi, you know, the New Delhi. So there, the, you know, uh, many multi-story building, like, you know, 20 floor, 20 stories. So locked down, people are there in that uh, multiple floors. And then, of course, uh, so here we work with one of uh, company there, the drone, the drone fitted with thermal camera. So a drone with thermal camera is able to go around that uh, apartment. You know, people were requested to come to the balcony and is able to go around and then take this temperature symptom of all those who are standing in the balcony. If someone has a temperature symptom that resembles COVID symptom, then they can quickly recommend, oh, battery isolation is first, otherwise it spread too much. Okay, so here the data that is captured through thermal camera uh, and then this is brought to the, the thermal camera is like now is a sensor. Like IoT, correct? So that data brought to the edge or a cloud where processing is done, then able to detect the symptom of a person, then of course, appropriate action can be taken. So this is like internet of drones. So this is the work uh, that we have done uh, as a, you know, on the published paper recently, actually last, uh, um, yeah, last year itself. So that is also getting a lot of properties. So this is a drone-based networking system for combating COVID-19 pandemic. Okay, so this is, Depend upon situation, we have to apply right technology. So this is the use of drone for, and the same concept can be used for agriculture. Okay, if you want to see what is the quality of crop, right? So there are many experiments showing, you know, drones with certain uh, thing and it, the camera, it'll, it'll move, uh, if it is a, like a big agriculture land, it'll go all the way from one place to another place and take snapshot of food to some places, you see, oh, is everything growing properly? Is there any uh, part of the crop is attacked by some kind of insect? Correct? So detection that. 
So detection can be important. If you detect, then you can plan something. So again, smart agriculture uh, area. So like that, uh, the similar concept can be applied. But uh, here we did it for uh, drone based approach. OK, for COVID-19 pandemic uh, sort of combating. OK, with that, let me uh, conclude. So before that, let me summarize. So there are several computing programs have promised this vision of how to make computing as utility. Cloud computing is the one which makes that into reality. So that is why we are using cloud for many applications without our knowledge. This is the success of cloud computing. So many exciting business and consumer applications are there. Then after that, I shifted to our discuss about Aneka. So Aneka uh, system and its uh, capability and then it's used in different applications in engineering, healthcare, uh, COVID-19 and so on. There are many applications where they used. Then after that, we discussed about IoT and their uh, potential. The first generation IoT applications were cloud centric. The new generations are more like a edge or fog. There is integration of edge and cloud resources. So this way we can support real time applications. And and reduce the load on the internet also. So that is the uh, in summary. There are many future challenges in case if somebody want to do uh, this is not the end. This is the beginning. So there are many challenges we have put together there, this one uh, uh, manifesto manifesto defining future generation cloud computing. So where we identify many challenges. So this provides you direction for next 10 year. So lots of challenges are there. Here is the challenges, for example. OK, and uh, if you want if a bit those who are don't have experience in cloud programming. So here is a book which is uh, mastering cloud computing. So this is American uh, publication, uh, something like ninety hundred dollar, so too expensive. Don't worry, I have a you know India solution. The same book published in India uh, by McGrahill in Delhi, and that is available for around uh, eight dollar. Uh, you know, like a ninety percent discount type, you can say. So that means uh, affordable, something like four hundred, four hundred, five hundred rupees book. And in fact, uh, other country like China, so even that also seems costly for them. So we have Chinese version of the same thing in Chinese language. Like in India, which is published in English, same thing, no problem, uh, it will work. But in China, that will not work. So you have to translate to Chinese language and publish. So we did that, and then uh, one of the professor from China translated it to Chinese language and published in China, available for three dollar. Okay, so half price of India. So, so this is uh, a book, and this is a book. Mastering cloud computing is a Prescott textbook in many universities throughout India because it's available there in a affordable price. Then, of course, those who have a lab uh, like RVC, NIE, many places, the premier institutes, they have already started. Slowly, it will come other places. So you can get it from uh, you know in uh, I think even the online also you can get it for four hundred rupees. And these days they will deliver free also. So they will deliver right direct to your home only. Okay. Then this IoT and edge computing also, there are books uh, I did. Um, so you can uh, go through uh, in case you like to you know, move. Then uh, since machine learning we talked about, I recently did a book on machine learning for cloud computing. You know? So this is a uh, machine learning for cloud computing, another book. So of course uh, you see more and more uh, advances taking place. So more books to come. Okay. So with this, let me stop here, and I'd like to thank all of you for hearing patiently, and uh, I'll be happy to take any questions uh, that you got. And meanwhile, here are my email IDs. So uh, for research communication, you can use my Melbourne University email ID, rb at unimelbury.edu. And those who want to set up an aka based cloud lab and use it for teaching research or maybe do some big commercial uh, solution, you can contact me using raj at mandarasop.com. Okay, so with this, let me stop here. And uh, so thank you very much. So we can now uh, go for a big screen uh, view. Um, and uh, discuss. Yeah, so I'm trying to bring the big screen. <coughs>
हेलो हेलो यस प्लीज गो एड सो अनम्यूट एंड आस्क ए क्वेश्चन we will uh, unmute everybody so that they can uh, go ahead with the question answer session yes yeah. so you can ask any question you like doesn't have to be cloud computing you can ask about uh, how is it like living or uh, swimming in mandra river for example yeah yeah <laughs> i just uh, wanted to add a, another profile to sir's profile sir is a follower of iskon and sir also gives discourses on bhagavad gita and i was uh, quite delighted when i could get a photo where sir is giving a discourse in china on bhagavad gita it was something like uh, we never thought of definitely i think uh, there is a huge requirement of this area too in uh, teaching fraternity where we can take our students in a right direction Uh, at the outset like i am very thankful to buya sir i i never uh, got an opportunity where like i give a message and sir will not reply me you give a message sir replies and very uh, like uh, easy to communicate and go along with sir i just uh, i just give my mic to rajshekar sir who will be uh, extending vote uh, of thanks to sir in the meantime i request like if there are any questions then you can ask we have unmuted we have muted during the session now you can unmute yourself and go ahead with the question uh, thank you manager sir uh, i request uh... in the middle everyone or what there is one question it seems sir yes uh, like uh, aneka solution for node mcu esp8266 does aneka can be uh, maybe the question may be aneka can be integrated with the node mcu esp8266 so what is this esp8266 it's uh, a microcontroller sir with uh, wifi and uh, bluetooth Uh, accessibility as uh, similar to a arduino board ah uh, okay all right so uh, if not aneka but like our uh, fog bus solution can be used for uh, integrating that kind of either computer communication capability um, to create that application Yeah, others can actually type their question. I can also see in the uh, okay chat box. Yeah. Hello, sir. Yeah. Hello, sir. This is Guru Prasad here from GNDC. Sir, what is the concept of network slicing in cloud computing? Okay, good. So you know when you are having uh, connectivity from, for example, from Australia to Bida. the melbourne to be there correct right? so now instead of using the standard networks there is a concept called software defined networks so just like computers will slice similar network can also be slice if you have sdn based connectivity from melbourne to be there so now we are communicating so there may be a multiple uh, you know flow of traffic from melbourne to be there but we want to provide the best quality for our communication correct right? so we can slice the bandwidth and allocate to different and we can one of the slice can be or oh, dedicated for this person out of this bandwidth of 50 mbps maybe slice into many but one slice is 1 mb that is dedicated for this person that is network slicing just like a slicing is a bread slicing right so you can say oh here is the half slice of the bed i dedicated to dhananjay another half everybody else correct so that is like a sharing so it is up to whoever is uh, strong their fellow will have it the rest may not have it so but if i dedicated uh, that is so there is a concept network slicing so Sir, how yeah how resource utilization can be efficiently done using the cloud uh, computing 
Sorry, uh, how? Resource utilization. Oh, okay. Can be efficiently managed using cloud computing. Yes. Okay. One. Uh, so because the cloud resources are shared across multiple users, so you don't need to you know allocate. Uh, say for example, so a a company in during peak hours, they probably need fifty servers. So if it is a traditional model of computing, they buy fifty servers and all fifty servers are running. And running their application. So during peak hours, 50 servers are used. During off peak, like night time, maybe one server used. Even though all of them are on, but only one is physically uh, you know, effectively used. So you can say during night time that 49 servers are simply wasting, simply consuming energy and wasting. If you move towards a cloud model, so then uh, when you go to cloud model, so for a given application, uh, the peak requirement is 50 there. But in a cloud system, dynamically it is able to you know change number of resources allocated for that application. Then of course the other that are unused is given to others. So for example, if it is a cloud, so during the peak hours uh, in uh, say in Bangalore or in India or in Bida, for example, so peak hour uh, is say your uh, afternoon, All right? Then for me that will be night time. And when you pick over for me, it will be maybe not pick over for you. So we will be sharing the resource dynamically through virtualization. So this way, cloud will allow you to use resources efficiently. And because resources are used efficiently, the cost of their service also will lower. So that means the companies build, uh, build, you know, charge based on actual usage. If somebody is using only one server rather than using 50 servers all the time, so cloud approach will charge you based on actual usage. Non the traditional approach will charge you whether you use it or not because they are dedicated for you. You got it? Yeah, dedicated uh, for you. Yeah, thank you, sir. Yeah. Some there was one question. Can we have object detection in our college? Yes, definitely. So, you know, we have put that uh, object detection uh, application which was done by IIT Delhi. Um, yeah, you usually these days cameras is not a big deal. Everybody has it. So, so surely can uh, take the data and uh, put it there. So it can be of great use. I can see different possibilities of using, you know, uh, some places if you go to principal chamber, you know, so they have so many classroom and our each classroom video is just a scan and just displayed uh, on the screen. Uh, so you have to uh, every frequently to see what is happening there, right? But you may not be able to capture what is actually happening. Uh, but with this having camera everywhere, able to detect object if there is some suspicious activity uh, is happening, uh, which is not regular, then maybe you know send an event or this happening. Yes, yeah, so many interesting such application can be created. Yeah, so detecting object based approach in uh, creating uh, and this can be a very good interesting project for our students also to do. Okay, sir, uh, we were also streaming this specific uh, session to our students. There is uh, a question from our final year student like uh, uh, our uh, Amazon Web Service AWS, they provide some amount of service which is free as uh, mentioned if they register is similar kind of facility is available with aneka to practice yeah actually aneka is a software technology for uh, you know composing applications and deploying either in amazon cloud or in a in uh, or your own uh, network of computers in your own pc lab so aneka is a software technology we just uh, give our software technology and we expect others to create such facility. For example, NI Mysore. So they created their own small scale cloud and put an account on top of it, and that's what they're doing. So we didn't get into the business of uh, maintaining infrastructure ourselves. Yeah. So we are a software. You know, within the cloud environment, we think as there is something called infrastructure service, platform as a service, then software as a service. We are in the middle. Which means uh, the people have to create their application, have to create their uh, infrastructure themselves. 
but application that I have shown you, there are various people, customers they have created. And for education people, of course, they like to learn the skills and they want to create their own. So that is working very nicely. Uh, Think so. Um, we can't hear. Yeah, I think maybe muted, huh? CSC, GND, CD, go on. Just a minute. I think there is still that uh, problem uh, persists. Since morning, like uh, our co-host is unable to uh, like uh, speak and present himself, uh, I am uh, I am with uh, Professor Rajshekar and Professor Dayanand. Dayanand sir is our uh, HOD. Professor Rajshekar is our colleague. And uh, from behalf of our management staff, our students, and from behalf of all our uh, colleagues, uh, we extend our gratitude to. Uh, Dr. Rajkumar Bhuya, sir, for gracing this uh, session. We are also thankful from behalf of our par participants who have joined us and uh, listened to this session. Uh, we hope like the session will be a, a good learning experience and people will start uh, taking interest in using cloud for different uh, varied applications uh, that will benefit the society. I'm again uh, from my like uh, heartly we thank uh, Bia sir for being part of this session. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you all, and I hope to see all of you in person in the future visit to India. I'm just waiting. yes, sir. We are definitely looking for and also have a small discourse on uh, Bhagavad Gita, if definitely. possible. Yeah, yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sir, sure, all the best for the rest of the FDP and all the programs. Thank you. Yes, sir. Your good wishes will be with us. Thank you, sir.
उधर से अनम्यूट करो पहले उधर है तो सुनो बोलो हेलो 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 आर्यवास हेलो 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 हाँ हेलो
Good morning, sir. Good afternoon, sir. I am Bhavna, working as an assistant professor, CSC department, GNDC Bidar. Today, I am very much delighted to introduce our speaker, Dr. Manish V. Kokre. Sir, is, um, sir has completed his PhD from IIT Kharagpur and Boyce Cast Postdoctoral Research uh, Fellow from University of California, SD USA. Sir is currently working as a professor in SGGS Institute of Engineering and Technology, Nanded. Sir is also uh, Dean Finance Resource Mobilization and Quality Assurance in the same SGGS Institute of Engineering Technology and Nanded. Sir has a research papers of almost 110. Sir has fetched research funding of rupees uh, 720 lakhs. He is also a member of IEEE, IEEE Signal Processing Society, life member of ISTE, life member of IETE, life member of System Society of India. Sir has got many awards and achievements. Uh, sir has been honored with AICT Vishweshwaraya Best Teacher Award for the year 2021 from AICT New Delhi in recognition with outstanding work in te techni technical education. Sir has also uh, honored with Best Teacher Award for the year 2013-14 from Swami Ramnand Tirth Marathwada University Nanded in recognition with excellent work in educational field award which carries certificate and a cash memo prize of rupees 10,000. Sir has also received Boy Scout Fellowship for the year 2010-2011 from the Department of Computer Science and Technology, Government of India, to carry out advanced research work at University of California, SB, USA, from August 2011 to 2012. Sir has also achieved best achievements in career award by alumni of Sri Guru Gobind Singh Institute of Engineering and Technology, Nanded, in Silver Jubilee Alumni Meet, held in December 2009. Sir has also got a Best Paper Award in Conference on Signal and Image Processing, which has been organized jointly by Institute of Engineering and Technology, UK. Sir has also published a biography in Who's Who in the World 2007. Sir has also received a prestigious award, AICT Career Award for Young Teachers of Rs. 10.5 lakh in the year 2005-2006. Sir has been a recipient of IAPL Travel Bursary Award of $500 from International Association of Pattern Recognition UK for research paper presented in International Conference on Pattern Recognition. He is also a recipient of 100% financial support from AICT to present the research paper in IEEE ICPR 2004 at Cambridge UK. Sir is also a reviewer of 20 international journals. Sir's area of interest are image processing, content-based image retrieval, wavelets, machine learning, computer vision, patent recognition, diabetic retinopathy. Thank you, sir. Over to you, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Am I audible? Yes, sir. You are audible. Okay. So now I'll share my presentation. Just one minute. Oh, is it visible now? Presentation is visible. <laughs> Yes, sir. It's it's loading, sir. Okay. Yes, sir. It's visible now. Fine, fine. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> okay. So, thank you so much. Uh, you know, for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to uh, uh, talk about uh, machine learning application and research challenges or AI and machine learning challenges and research uh, applications and so on. So in this one and a half hour, okay, first I'll talk a bit about uh, fundamentals in four or five slides and then why machine learning AI is so popular nowadays. The, after that, I'll talk about some applications, few applications of that one. And then after that, I'll talk about what are the research challenges and what are the research opportunities in this area. Uh, so uh, my lecture will be in that way. Okay. Uh, I hope that and now I'm clearly audible to you people. Hmm? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Uh, so basically why uh, nowadays, okay, uh, why would like to, how would like to make the machine intelligent like as the human being, okay, a human intelligent or like that, okay. Uh, before that, how human being becomes intelligent, okay. You know that for the human being to become intelligent, 
uh, main part of human body are the human sensors. Okay, so we have uh, five sensory organs. Okay, which are those? Number one is your eye. Number two is your ear. Number three is your nose. Fourth one is your tongue, and fifth one is your skin. Okay, because all those sensory organs collect the data around the world, and the whole data is basically sent uh, sent to the brain, and then after that, brain processes that data, and then make the appropriate decision, final decision, and so on. Now, see that means basically, see if you look. Uh, at the research side, okay, is it like that? Okay, if we have a five sensory organs, means if all those five sensory organs are giving hundred percent information to the brain, is it a linear combination? Like for example, we get the information from our eyes, twenty percent information, then twenty percent information from ear, twenty percent information from your nose, and twenty percent information from your tongue, and then twenty percent information from the skin. Is it like that? Absolutely not, not like that. Research says that, okay, major information to your brain is collected through your eyes. That is nothing but the visual information. So research says that 78% information, you get it from in the form of visual uh, data. Okay. And then remaining 22% information, you get it from your, okay, ear, then you get it from your nose and then, tongue and then your skin and so so to become an intelligent okay in data is important without data you cannot become intelligent and so on so data and then after that how you are processing it and then how you are making the decision okay so that is very very important from the human point of view in the same way we have to okay make the machine intelligent like the human intelligent or beyond that in certain cases machine is more intelligent as compared to human because human has some uh, basically uh, limitations so that can be uh, uh, basically that can be uh, over, overcome by using the machine and so on right now uh, See that, uh, as I said, that 78% information you get it from your eyes, that is nothing but the visual information. And visual information, if you correlate this one with your AI, okay, so AI is artificial intelligence is basically a big umbrella under which, okay, you can make the machine artificial intelligence with the vision, with the audio, with the video, with the text, with the, okay, so several data and so on. So. Image and video processing is one of the important subject in AI. Then speech processing is another subject which is uh, uh, important. Or natural language processing is also another subject. Then machine learning is there, pattern recognition is there, computer vision is there. So under the big umbrella of your uh, AI, all those subjects comes. Okay, so uh, probability is there, statistic is there, linear linear algebra is there, image processing is there, video processing is there, machine learning is there, deep learning is there, and so uh, pattern version is there, and then speech processing is there, and so on, or biomedical signal processing, image processing, and so on. So under the big umbrella of AI, we have to study all the subject. One of the important subject is that, as I said that, okay, we get information from your, okay, five sensory organs and the whole information is sent to the brain. And brain is nothing but, it, okay, it, it, it is nothing but your neural network, which is connected, interconnected to each other, okay. So it is an interconnection of neural networks, okay. So artificial neural network is nothing but your brain and the whole information is sent to the brain uh, in either in the form of visual data or in the form of audio data or in the form of smell or in the form of uh, test or uh, touch and uh, so on. So like that way. So uh, neural network is also one of the important subject under the umbrella of AI and so on. Now, what is the difference between okay, AI, machine learning and deep learning? So as I said that, okay, AI, is a big umbrella under which all subject you have to study. Then and then you can, okay, make the machine, 
uh, intelligent with the with the help of the knowledge of that subject and so on so artificial intelligence is any technique that enables the computer to mimic the human intelligence so we have to make the uh, basically uh, machine just like which which will mimic the human intelligence okay now you take the example that when our kid okay how how we become intelligent after okay uh, after our birth and so on so when that kid is born after that kid starts observing okay parents or the relatives and so on so through observation that okay kid will acquire the intelligence then through experience that kid will start acquiring the intelligence and so on and then after that okay three four years of uh, age of that kid we send that kid to the school and then there will be formal teaching uh, to that uh, kid and then that formal teaching like for example you must be knowing that when that kid is sent to the lkg class uh, in uh, for 15 20 days or for one entire month that teacher will teach that kid only draw the horizontal line or vertical line or forward slant line backward slant line semi circle and circle because all those are nothing but the features of uh, your alphabets so if you want to draw the a then just you have to draw a forward slant line backward slant line and then horizontal line b vertical line semi circle semi circle c semi circle and so on so like that way all those alphabets are made up of uh, this one feature so feature is one of the important part for, okay uh, to acquire the intelligence in the uh, machine and so on because human also use the same thing you might have you might have observed that okay when you read the newspaper on the first page of newspaper uh, cartoons are drawn okay now those cartoons are in the form of ages right it is not in the form of color or it is not in the form of texture so age is very very important uh, from the brain point of view to acquire the knowledge and so on so age in the in case of image processing it is nothing but the high spatial frequency because uh, at the age rate of change of pixel intensity is very very high as compared to the other part of the image and so high spatial frequency is very very important uh, from the human point of view same thing we have to use uh, for the machine also to make the machine intelligent and so on so as i said that under the big umbrella of ai you, uh, you have to you should have the knowledge of artificial neural network you should have the knowledge of image and video processing you should have the knowledge of uh, signal processing you should have the knowledge of speech processing natural language processing machine learning pattern recognition or deep learning and so on so all those subjects are the subset of ai so ai is nothing but any technique that enables the computer to mimic human intelligence using the logic or if then rules or decision trees and machine learning and so on whereas machine learning is a subset of ai and a subset of ai that in, okay in, uh, includes attributes statistical techniques that enables machines to improve a task with the experience and uh, the category include the deep learning and so on so you know that deep learning is the subset of machine learning because if you see uh, simple machine learning, uh, artificial neural by using artificial neural network, the architecture of simple machine learning model, uh, so it has one input layer where number of neurons in the input layer is equal to number of features, and number of, uh, output layer is equal to number of neurons in the output layer is equal to number of classes, and in between input layer and output layer there is a hidden layer, so which is used for storing the intermediate results and so on. Uh, whereas in the deep learning, instead of having only one hidden layer, multiple hidden layers are used. So that breakthrough is there since 2006 from the University of Toronto, Canada. So those researchers okay, did the experiment of increasing the number of hidden layers. And then so many complex problems can be solved with the help of this deep learning and so on. So deep learning is the subset of machine learning composed of algorithm that permits the software to train itself to perform the task like speech and image recognition by exposing the multi-layered so this is multi-layered neural network to vast amount of data so if you look uh, in the difference uh, if you look at the one-to-one -one difference between the machine learning and deep learning so the, uh, uh, this one upper portion is nothing but the machine learning and the lower portion is nothing but the deep learning so you can clearly see there are five to six main difference between the machine learning and deep learning one is that see 
there are two separate uh, stages in the machine learning that is feature extraction is one stage and classification is another stage in case of simple machine learning algorithm whereas in case of deep learning algorithm this feature extraction and classification is combined together so this is just like as a black box for the users and so on right so this is the first difference between machine learning and deep learning second difference between machine learning and deep learning is that the kind of hardware which is used uh, in a case of machine learning the requirement is less whereas in case of deep learning you need uh, very intensive hardware like a cpu along with cpu uh, and processors and so on and uh, so high end machines are required in case of deep learning whereas that much requirement is not there in case of simple machine learning so that's second difference third difference is that okay where it can be used machine learning applications simple machine learning applications are used for solving the moderate problems whereas deep learning uh, okay is used for solving the complex problems okay in 2018 myself and my three research scholar okay we went uh, to conduct the online challenge at university uh, this one uh, washington dc in usa uh, in article international symposium on biomedical matching and you know that there were 800 research researchers who were participating in that conference it is one of the topmost conference in biomedical matching and so on so we have developed our first indian diabetic retinopathy database in uh, in india we have named that indian diabetic retinopathy database as a idr id so that has that has been developed uh, in 2018 by my team and then we conducted online challenge in the ISB in 2018 at Washington DC. So myself and my three research scholars went there and we conducted that challenge. So as I said that there were 800 researchers participating in all over from all over the world. And then out of that, okay, when we observed nearly 750 papers were okay involved in the deep learning because deep learning, you see, in biomedical imaging, the problems are complex and uh, for solving the complex problem deep learning algorithms are very very useful and so on so 750 papers were used by, okay or talking about the deep learning for application of biomedical so maybe there are several bi biomedical modalities are there and so on right so for complex problems this deep learning algorithm is used for simple problems or moderate problems simple machine learning algorithms are used so this is the third difference for the difference is that okay uh, what kind of data you need okay so data which is required for um, in case of machine learning or the sample number of samples required are moderate but the number of samples which are required in case of deep learning are huge okay so large database is needed in case of or you have to do the data augmentation in case of deep learning if you have limited database and so on whereas uh, the simple machine learning algorithm can be worked on the limited database and so on so these are the main differences between the machine learning and deep learning right now what are the different types of learnings machine learnings so there are mainly four types of machine learning number one is supervised learning approach Another one is unsupervised learning approach. Third one is semi-supervised learning approach. And fourth one is a reinforced learning approach. Okay. Now, you know that supervised learning approach where you have priori information. Okay. Or I'll correlate that one with learning with a formal teaching. Like, for example, when that kid is sent to the school, uh, okay, primary school or high school after that to junior college and college and so on so up to college level or up to pc level there are teachers to teach those subjects and then that student will learn through the teacher and after that after learning he will be tested through the examination and so on so that kind of learning is nothing but the supervised learning means basically in a case of machine learning if you are talking about the super learning so it is a, okay where priori information is known means basically all the samples in the database are well labeled number of classes are known all the training and testing validation samples are well known so in that case okay so that kind of learning is nothing but the supervised learning and so on Whereas in unsupervised learning, 
see in, whether it is a supervised learning or unsupervised learning there are two the two phases one is training phase and another one is testing phase so even in human learning also formal learning you have two phases one is basically teaching and another one is basically testing testing through the examination or quizzes or whatever modality you can use so that is so in the same way for machine learning also there are two phases one is training phase and another one is testing phase and so on so testing phase will give you how accurate your algorithm is there and uh, training phase will give you okay who will train the algorithm for various cases and so on now how you are training that is very very important okay whether you are doing only one fold uh, uh, validation or you are doing two fold validation or ten fold validation so but generally as per international standard ten fold cross validation is used because if you do one fold cross validation then uh, okay you will not get the correct result or basically the performance of that algorithm which is you have developed will not be reflected correctly and so on so generally as per international standard ten fold cross validation is used okay means uh, one fold is used for training purpose uh, testing purpose and another nine folds are used for training purpose so this iteration is done by ch changing the training testing uh, uh, this one fold uh, folder and then uh, including all those things in the training and so on so uh, that will give the correct otherwise suppose for example if you are using same patterns or same data for training purpose and you are using same data for testing purpose then uh, it will not reflect the correct result and so on so generally as per standard uh, tenfold cross validation is used in machine learning uh, so as i said that in supervised learning approach all the data is well known or prior information is known and uh, so on uh, or the I, I'll, as i correlated this one as a formal teaching and so on whereas in unsupervised learning nothing is known how many samples are known, uh, there that is also not known how many classes are there that is also not known okay so basically it is just like as learning without teacher so unsupervised learning is prior information is not known okay number of samples are not known number of classes are not known so you have to use the similarity criteria okay or other criteria which are there in the unsupervised learning to learn the things so just this is like okay i'll correlate this one as learning uh, which is done by the ecolab without teacher he has learned the things and so on so uh, where data is not labeled okay number of classes are not known and so on whereas in semi supervised learning it is a combination of uh, supervised learning as well as unsupervised learning so part of the data or samples part okay partly samples are labeled and remaining samples are unlabeled and so on so uh, this is the just combination of supervised and unsupervised learning whereas reinforced learning okay i'll say that i'll correlate this reinforced learning with the uh, research scholar okay now you know that for research scholar okay, after pg he will be joining the phd program and so on so that research scholar either he or she has the supervisor now whether supervisor is going to teach everything in phd tenure absolutely not otherwise supervisor has to do multiple phds with multiple students so phd is your baby so you have to learn you have to develop new algorithm you have to develop new things and so on and then what is the role of supervisor then so once you develop your algorithm or once you get the result you have to discuss with your supervisor and supervisor will evaluate or supervisor with his expertise will tell you whether you are on right track or wrong if you are on right track definitely supervisor will appreciate you but if you are on the wrong track he will fire you okay. generally this is expected that okay to correct you whether you are on right track or wrong track to assess that one is the job of supervisor so reinforced learning is just like that here also prior information is not known you have to develop the algorithm and then you have to classify that one or recognize that one and then after recognition you will get the feedback whether you have correctly identified it or not if you have your algorithm is correctly identifying or recognizing that one then you will get the positive feedback 
and if you are doing the wrong mistake in that then you'll get the negative feedback so from this feedback again you have to do you have to learn the relearn that one and improve your performance and so on so over the period of time your performance will be ultimate performance and so on so here you get the feedback after the result and then the iterations are going on so uh, reinforced learning is just I'll, as i have correlated that one uh, it just like as doing a phd under super guidance of supervisor and so on so you'll get the reverse from the sequence of actions how you are doing whether you are on the right track you'll get the positive feedback if you are on the wrong track you'll get the negative feedback and so on now this is the complete picture of machine learning basically machine learning is okay as i said that mainly it is classified into supervised learning unsupervised learning and reinforced learning so this supervised learning is further classified into two types one is regression and another one in the classification so regression where your output is in the form of continuous whereas in classification your output in the, is in the form of discrete like for example this is the iphone or this is the mobile so these are the discrete basically outputs but if you are predicting like for example this is the this will be the um, uh, share market value of this particular company share after five years and so on so this will be the continuous value so prediction of something okay will be the continuous and so on so that is nothing but the regression like for example my campus of sri guru gobind singh Ji institute of engineering technology this is my institute uh, and the total area of this institute is 46 acres and 10 branches are there undergraduate postgraduate and phd program nearly 3000 students are there in my institute right now suppose for example if i have a data of electricity requirement of, for my entire institute okay can i predict that what will be the load requirement electricity load requirement of my institute after five years on this particular date at this particular time and so on like for example on 5th january 2025 at 2 pm what will be the load requirement of my institute like uh, uh, this electricity load requirement and so on can i predict now right now in 2022 or something like that yes absolutely it is possible if i have the previous data like five years data, that data may be of hourly like at 7 a.m. on this day, how much load requirement is there, then 8 a.m. like that way, the um, uh, daily data, weekly data, monthly data, and yearly data. So if we know the trend and if you develop the algorithm which will study the okay previous trend and then forecast the something, so that will be, uh, that is nothing but the regression and so on. So that can be used, like for example, weather forecasting can okay is example of your regression or population growth uh, prediction is uh, of city is nothing but the regression algorithm or like for example my okay in my center of excellence in signal damage processing which we have developed uh, okay we have got five pros for establishment of center of excellence uh, so we have state of art center of excellence in my institute and I'm head of heading that center of excellence. So uh, we have a group, one group is working with Tata Memorial Hospital Bombay and particularly on brain tumor uh, segmentation and then survival prediction of that. So we have a, a, a good team, okay, which is working in that and um, we have good, we have got a very good support from the doctors of Tata Memorial Hospital Bombay. And then we developed a model where, okay, which will predict that how many years or how many months or how many days that patient will survive after okay having the brain tumor and so on and then after that okay okay we collected the database from the Tata Memorial hospital we developed the model by using machine learning and so on and then after that we participated in the Mikai conference which was held in 2018 September 2018 at Spain so Mikai is also one of the best conference uh, in biomedical imagining so there were 64 countries participating in that conference we were one among them and in that 64 countries we stood third our model stood third uh, we got third prize there uh, okay which was telling how okay which was talking about the survival prediction of the human uh, or patient who is suffering with brain tumor and so on so you can okay you can do the expect okay estimate the life expectancy of a uh, human being or any other uh, this one uh, mammal uh, and so on uh, if that person is uh, suffering with the uh, brain tumor or any other uh, like okay so this is the example of uh, your regression or market forecasting of particular uh, company or weather forecasting or advertising uh, popularity prediction of 
some actor or celebrity and so on so this is nothing but this is the example of regression where the output is in the continuous form whereas in classification as i said that output is in discrete form okay like for example uh, okay identify this is a iphone or this is the mobile or this is your pain so all those are the discrete classes and so on right so uh, this uh, this is nothing but the classification which is used for diagnostic purpose or customer retention or image classification or identity uh, find the frauds and so on Whereas, so uh, as I said that a supervised learning approach is classified into regression and classification, whereas unsupervised learning approach is further classified into clustering and dimensional data reduction. So as I said that clustering is basically here, priory information is not known. So you have to uh, basically find out the similar things from the objects and then we have to group those together. Like for example, uh, if I'm teaching to the third year, uh, third year engineering, uh, so in my class, suppose for example, there are 60 students and I'd like to cluster based on the gender. So definitely gendering means I'll be grouping the girl students and boy students. So definitely girls and boys have their own features. So based on the features, similarity features, we'll be grouping that one. So I will get the two clusters here. One is male, male and another one is female. But in the same class, if I change the, my, okay, if I change my right area, instead of gender based, if I check the criteria based on the marks like for example i'd like to uh, form the group like those students who got more than 70 percent mass so, so that will be one group then uh, another group will be 60 to 70 uh, third group will be 50 to 60 and a fourth one group will be below 50 and so on now in that group there may be boys and there may be girls and so on so what is the similarity similarity is that all the boys in the first group will be having more than 70 percent marks second group will be between 60 to 60 70 and so on so uh, this clustering technique is okay uh, based on the similarity and so on so it is uh, based on the recommender system or targeted marketing or customer segmentation and so on whereas uh, in unsuper okay another thing is that unsuper okay uh, uh, another part of uh, unsuper learning is dimensionality reduction and so on so you know that like for example if i classify the uh, like uh, if i take the example of amitabh bachchan and amir khan so to uh, recognize amitabh bachchan and amir khan uh, we need only two features like for example uh, one feature is height and other feature is weight okay only two features are sufficient because height of amitabh Bachchan is more whereas at the height of amir khan is less weight is also different so we can easily classify but okay if i increase number of feature like for example if i for more accuracy if i use the third feature like as a, a voice pattern so voice pattern of amir uh, okay uh, amitabh Bachchan is different and voice pattern of uh, American is different and so on. So like that way, if you want to okay classify the objects uh, by unsupervised method, and then if you are extracting more number of features, so some of like for example, I have extracted hundred features, and then out of hundred features, only ten features are really dominant. Which by using the ten features, I can get ninety percent accuracy. But remaining 90, 90 features, okay, only three through three to four percent accuracy is improved. So how to identify which are the dominant features, uh, and so that dimensionality can be reduced and so on so dimensionality uh, reduction is one of the uh, okay part of unsupervised learning like which is used for feature extractions or structure discovery or meaningful comparison or big data visualization and so on so unsupervised learning can be further classified into clustering or dimensional interaction whereas the third learning is reinforced learning which is used particularly used for game uh, ai technique or skill acquisition in robots or learning tasks or robot navigations or real-time decisions and so on so this is the clear picture of machine learning how it happens and so on right now why machine learning or ai is nowadays very very important or why people are talking about AI and machine learning so i'll tell you that when i was doing my PhD at iit karakpur in 2001 i joined uh, uh, iit karakpur in uh, on 22nd july 2001 i finished my PhD is within two years three months time from iit karakpur and came back before completing uh, three years uh, with 14 publications out of that six were in IEEE uh, journals uh, two IEEE in journals two iit and two elsewhere and eight IEEE conferences and so on so at that time we were using the machine like as a p3 machine okay so see that this green bar 
So I have identified three reasons why AI and machine learning is on the rise nowadays. Number one is, okay, if you go back 20 years, what kind of machines you were having? And now, okay, in my center of excellence, what kind of machines we have? Okay, so what is the power of machine? So power of machine, so at that time I used to use, during my PAD, I used to use the P3 machine or P2 machine or P4 machine or the high-end machine at that time. But now, okay, machines are I7 and so on. The power has been increased 10,000 times. So our machine are becoming more powerful and so on. Second thing is that this one, yellow line, okay, the data cost, storage data cost, or this one, average data cost has been reduced exponentially. In 2000, the average data cost was $12.47 per gigabyte, but now in 2020s, this has been reduced uh, up to 0 0.004 per gigabyte. So data cost is reduced. So everybody is trying to upload the data on the internet. The data is in the form of audio, data is in the form of video, data is in the form of images, data is in the form of text, okay, or graphs and so on. So heterogeneous data is there. So it is a heap of that data. Now having only data is of no use unless and until we extract the meaningful information which will help, will be helpful for making the decision and so on. So there is a tremendous growth in the data so the, this third line shows that, uh, the uh, red line shows that this is exponentially increasing. Data on the internet is exponentially increasing. Now, we, okay, handling that data with the simple machine learning is not uh, sufficient and so on. So definitely large database, deep learning, or deep learning approaches are useful and which will make you a real contribution and so on. So why AI and machine learning is on the rise? Because your data is, data growth is exponential. Machine power is also increasing. Data cost is reducing. So these are the three main reasons why people have shifted to machine learning or AI uh, for extracting the meaningful information or making the decision from the large data and heterogeneous data or big data and so on. Now, second thing is that what is the job land? Okay, job landscape in 2022. So in two, in this okay 22 okay 2022 top M10 emerging jobs will be in the data analytics or scientist or AI and machine learning specialist or general uh, operation managers or software application developers and analytics or sales and marketing professionals or big data specialist or digital transformation specialist or new technology specialist or organizational development specialist and so on. Where is the decline of the job is in the routine jobs. Okay, like data entry clerks or accounting or bookkeeping or administrative or executive secretaries or assembly and factory because everywhere automation will be there. So where reputation is there, repetition of work is there. So that will be automated and uh, so on. So uh, definitely we have to tune ourselves or our next generation students should be well equipped with the new trends and so on. So that's why we have to uh, focus on this uh, technology. Another thing is that this is the era of intelligent machines. Six months back, I was attending one of the short-term training program which was offered by IIT. And then the professor from communication side, he was telling that in the 4G, we were, okay, as a human being, we are connected to four to five devices. And th those devices are connected to the internet and so on. Like for example, if your smartwatch is there, then okay, your mobile phone is there, then you have uh, this one, uh, your laptop is there and so on. So all those are connected to internet and so on. But into the, okay, in fifth generation of uh, uh, this 5G, okay, every person will be, uh, will be connected with the internet with at least 25 devices, right? Means basically your smartwatch will be, okay, smartwatch will record your all those health data are not only recorded, it will be communicated. If something happens, it will be automatically communicated to, to your uh, personal doctor or even ambulance or police department, or it will be automatically communicated to your um, family members and so on. So 
you will get immediate uh, basically services and uh, we can save the life of many people and so on with the help of this one. So uh, this, okay, we are entering in the era of modern machines and which are really useful uh, for making the right decisions and so on. So by 2.02 by robots and machine learning and artificial intelligence, okay, will displace over one third of all jobs. <laughs> Right. So, why why industries are switching over to the AI and machine learning? Okay. So, what are the primary benefits that they are getting? So, there are ten primary benefits. Why they are what what kind of the uh, uh, advantage they are getting is that they can enhance the feature of their product. They can announce the functions of that product. They can announce the performance of that product with the help of AI and machine learning. They can make the better decision by use of AI and machine learning in their operations or business and so on. They can create the new product. They can optimize the internal businesses with the AI and machine learning technology, or they can free up the worker to be more creative by automating the task or pursue the new market or capture and apply skills, knowledge where needed and optimize the internal external processes like marketing and sales and reduce the headcount uh, through the automation and so on. So these are the primary benefits to the industries. That's why it's not only e-group like as an electronics computer, IT or uh, these people are working in AI. It's not like that. Now AI is everywhere, whether it is a process industries or whether it is a service industry, everywhere AI will be used and so on. So these are the job opportunities, emerging job opportunities. And then this indeed report shows that, okay, there will be growth in the big data job opportunities or AI machine learning, visualization, internet of things, open source or 3D printing or virtual uh, augmented reality or cloud computing, blockchain, cryptocurrency, Bitcoin, variable cash and so on. So these are the okay buzzwords nowadays uh, in this field. Now, what about the industries, whether they are tuned up whether they are really working in that. So already industries are working in the AI and machine learning domain. So thousands of industries are there in AI. Like for example, 123 industries are there in ML learning journal application. 260 companies are there in, in machine learning application. In 106 companies are there in uh, computer vision or uh, 83 companies are there in computer vision application. 65 computer uh, companies are there. Then virtual uh, personal assistants or speech to uh, speech translation or uh, see speech to speech translation is one of the important part of the AI and machine learning. See nowadays because of this pandemic we are not able to move but I have delivered uh, more than uh, uh, 400 lectures in various institute in all over India. Uh, I have visited several times to Karnataka, uh, several places or Andhra Pradesh or uh, Madhya Pradesh and Gujarat and so on. But whenever I visit the Karnataka or Andhra Pradesh and so on, since I know that Marathi or Hindi or English, so whenever I read any kind of script, uh, whether it is a Kannada script or Telugu script or uh, Tamil script and so on, I don't, I can't understand. I can't read that one. Okay, so I become an illiterate in other state, uh, particularly for the local language and so on. But okay. Can we develop the app which will basically okay capture the image and which will convert that okay Kannada to Marathi or Marathi to Kannada or Telugu to Kannada and so on? Because see that there are see nowadays the earning capacity of many people has improved in India and so for example a farmer who is there residing in Nanded would like to go to Germany but he cannot speak German language he knows only Marathi. So if we have the language, a speech to speech convention, okay, uh, which will convert from Marathi to German or German to this one just by using this app. So that will be really useful. And there basically um, uh, machine learning or AI will play a dominant role. And many people uh, have started working in that for speech to speech translation or natural language processing and so on. So there are several companies available working in that. And not only that one, there are so many startups also coming up uh, in the those who will be working in this area. So these are the startups companies working in the AI and machine learning domain and so on. Now, what kind of see to 
fulfill the requirement of the industries we have to generate our research or researchers or students like undergraduate students or graduate students having the skill like what they they should know the r language they should know the python language they should have the uh, hands on experience of uh, sql matlab java c and c++ but particularly in ai and machine learning this r and python language is very very important uh, essential uh, many universities have changed their uh, slabs. Even we have started new AI branch in our uh, institute. Now, if you compare the coding skill of Indian students uh, compared with the other, like as a US or UK and then other countries, we are equally better, or sometimes we are far better than the other countries and so on. So, uh, whether it is Python coding or R coding or SQL MATLAB and Java and C C++, okay, we are equally better, but still we have to improve our things and so on. So, what skills are required for our students to work in the field of AI and machine learning? So, they should have the knowledge of machine learning. They should have the strong knowledge of Python, SAS, and uh, and Scala. They should have the hands-on experience on SQL and database coding, or they should have the ability to work with the unstructured data. As I said, that data is there, huge amount of data is there that will be unstructured, but from that unstructured data, you have to make the best decision with the help of AI and machine learning uh, techniques and understand the multiple analytic function. So uh, our students should be able to deal with that, one, right? Now, what is the revenue? What is the prediction? What is the forecasting? Uh, how much AI will dominate all over the world? Revenue from the AI, okay, how much it will be dominating and so on. So today, today, okay, it is exponentially increasing. Today we are here, so by 2021, it is less than 20,000 US dollar millions. Okay, but by 2025, it will touch to 60,000 million dollar, uh, which will be generated as a revenue from the AI and related uh, products and so on. So definitely for this one, we need a skilled manpower, which will work in this domain and so on. So not only in AI, but AI, machine learning and Internet of Things. So Internet of Things will collect basically uh, uh, Internet of Things will collect the data basically uh, from various sensors and so on from multiple sources. But after that, uh, only having the data is of no import, not important. You have to do the analysis, make the perfect decision, and for that, AI and machine learning is very, very important and so on. Right now, uh, uh, what is basically what uh, uh, countries have taken the efforts uh, so that this benefit will reach to the common man. Uh, in their own country and so on. So every country has uh, formed their policies uh, which is suitable for AI infrastructure and so on. So that may be infrastructure, that may be uh, skill development of the human power, and that may be use of that AI technology by the common man and so on. So that policy are made by every country. So first policy was made by uh, this uh, pan Canadian in 2000, uh, Ma uh, 17 March. Then after that, Singapore has also announced their policy of AI. Where is India? So India is, okay, India has announced the AI policy. You must be aware of Niti Aayog. So they have published the paper in June 2018, and that talks about the AI policy, uh, what kind of infrastructure will be developed, okay, what kind of mil uh, um, uh, skilled manpower will be developed, and then how it will be useful and so on. So that paper is available on the internet, so you can read that one. So most of the countries, they have developed their own policies, uh, which is related to AI, uh, use of AI, and so on. Now, if you look at the breakthroughs and timeline, research and development timeline of AI. So it's not like that it has happened, happened over the night and something like that. AI related technology has been started 50 years back or 60 years back or 70 years back. So first, uh, research in this domain was started in 1940s by enactment of the first world's computer because for AI related you need a machine which is powerful. Then in 1947, Alan Turing proposes the concept of AI. In 50s and 60s, first boom of AI was developed. Okay, and that was the age of reasoning. So prototype AI was developed. In 1979, the concept of neural network came and then uh, 
they introduced okay this uh, Koniko uh, Fukushima uh, introduced the theory of neural network in 1979 and after that there was a boom of second AI boom uh, in 80s and 90s so that was the age of knowledge representation so the systems were able to reproduce the human decision making and so on in 2006 as I said that the concept of deep learning was developed uh, by the University of Toronto researchers and after that many researchers started using deep learning algorithm so the third boom of AI started in 2010 uh, that boom is machine learning and deep learning boom of AI and so on so in this way uh, the research has been progressed and definitely there will be much more progress here after uh, and so on now what are the applications of AI or machine learning So, uh, you know that uh, the timeline or breakthroughs which are developed uh, related to AI, uh, one of the breakthrough was uh, Google Brain, uh, which are developed by Google. And then uh, with the help of that Google Brain, you can identify um, uh, uh, objects 75% with accuracy and correctly and so on. So that was the one of the breakthrough. Then in 2012, Apple introduced the Siri, uh, Siri voice assistant. Then in 2013, China 10x2 doubles the world's top supercomputing, uh, having the power of 33.86 petaflop. Uh, so that is the supercomputing machines and so on. In 2014, Facebook developed the deep face uh, uh, for facial recognition algorithm, which has the accuracy uh, near human uh, accuracy and so on. Then in 2015, this Gopa, Google has developed the open source uh, TensorFlow architecture and so on. So many people are using that TensorFlow architecture and so on. Then in 2016, Google has developed the Deep Minds Alpago and so on. So like that way, these are the major breakthroughs uh, developed by the industries in AI and ML. Now, what are the examples uh, of this one? So examples uh, like uh, machine learning examples are uh, machine learning can be used in retail, machine learning can be used in marketing or healthcare or in other uh, telecommunication application or in finance and so on. Like for example, in retail uh, demand forecasting, okay, what will be the demand and so on or supply chain optimization or pricing optimization or market segmentation and targeting or recommendations so that can be used. In marketing, like for example, nowadays see marketing was done through the advertisement. Earlier advertisement was like, for example, doing the advertisement in the newspaper, doing the advertisement on the television, doing the advertisement on the internet and so on. But all those advertisements are a common advertisement or general advertisement applicable to all. But can we have the advertisement for particularly for, a, for you? Like for example, I okay, if I go to the uh, shopping mall and then I'm particularly interested in uh, this product and then uh, maybe this product is out of my budget and then if I'll keep my, that product again on the shelf. And now nowadays you know that everywhere these cameras are fixed. So your activities will be recognized and so on. So your activities will be analyzed and then what is your need will be analyzed. And then according to your need, like for example, see, I went to the shopping market and then I saw this product, but I could not purchase maybe because of it is out of my budget or something is not uh, appealing to me or something like that. So I have kept that uh, product again back on the shelf. So this shows that I have interest, but there is some limitation or hesitation to purchase that product right now. So uh, since you are okay, uh, monitored with the several cameras, so this uh, images are or videos are there, so it will be analyzed and then uh, your data is there, your email address is there uh, with that uh, supermarket owner or your phone number, your WhatsApp number is there and then next day you will get the information about, more information about the product which you are interested. So, okay, so this advertisement is a micro advertisement, which means it is made for an individual person. So this is possible with the help of AI and machine learning and so on. So marketing can be targeted in marketing and so on uh, through analysis of customer in 360 feedback and so on or social media analysis or ad optimization or in healthcare also for guide diagnosis or any disease or uh, customer churn or system log analysis or at analysis detection and then in finance also you can have the risk analysis or customer 360 degree analysis or fraud detection or credit scoring and so on now this is one of the important application which i like most 
okay now suppose for example in india or any most of the countries you will find that if somebody uh, is unfortunate and then uh, he has to go to the court for seeking the justice but you know that if that person goes to the court then there will be uh, okay he has uh, sometime you might have heard that that some of the person have got the justice after 20 years or decision after 20 years so justice delayed is justice denied why why this is happening maybe because of lack of uh, number of courts or number of uh, judges are less and so on and our population is huge so can we use the machine learning algorithm or AI related technologies okay which will assist them and which will give better uh, justice uh, okay compared to the human being so this research was carried out in us okay so you know that this uh, okay how the judges are giving the justice they are giving the justice based on the facts based based on the rules and regulations of the countries or um, uh, this one indian penal code and so on so all those things are there so all those are the reliable data basically so it will machine will learn from that one so facts then uh, earlier uh, cases references of earlier cases or uh, your rules of country and so on and based on that one you can give the best ju judgment of that particular case so uh, this research was carried out uh, okay and then this ai based uh, technology was giving 94 percent more accurate result as compared to the human best judgment given by the uh, this is the average of 20 lawyers or 20 judges uh, so their accuracy is 85 percent whereas the ai based technology for the same cases is 94 percent more accurate this is why this is less because in it, uh, okay after all in the human judges judgment is biased somewhere it may be biased so it may not be accurate but air related technology may be more accurate and people will get the right judgment okay and quick judgment so hereafter you'll surprise you may not surprise that okay uh, machine learning uh, algorithms will be used in the uh, court to give the cut decision as quickly as possible so uh, justice will not be delayed so you, everybody will get the justice as early as possible so maybe in the future AI and machine learning will be used in courts and so on then you know that healthcare already i have talked about see my team is working on diabetic retinopathy okay my another team is working on survival prediction of a brain tumor and so on so we are particularly interested in biomedical signal image processing and so on so uh, you know that in biomedical there are various modalities like x-ray imaging is there diabetic retinopathy fundus imaging is there or ct or mri or PET or there are several modalities which are available and uh, then radiology basically uh, uh, check the images which are captured through the ct which are captured through the x-ray which are captured to the mri and so on and then based on that uh, uh, their expertise they give the decision so this this is about the image reading so image reading can be also done by using the machine learning and so on so if you have a huge database so machine learning deep learning algorithm can be used and you'll get more uh, accurate result so we are not replacing the doctors but we are developing the technology which will assist the doctors and so on so ml won't completely replace the healthcare personnel there is a good possibility uh, they will complement routine diagnostic that requires a lot of time and expertise so you can save the lot of time of radiologist uh, to check the you know, all CT images or MRI images and so on. So in reality, recent advances of field of machine learning are enabling vision algorithms to surpass the human vision capabilities and so on. Right. Then another thing is that okay, machine learning in security. See that this type of cameras you might have seen at many places. Okay. Sometimes it is on, sometimes it is off, and so on. Whether that data is really recorded or not. Okay. Now, what happens present in present situation? This data or videos are recorded. Uh, Everything is fine. Okay. So, like for example, uh, this one. Uh, okay, this will capture the videos of very okay uh, places and so on. Now only capturing, see in present situation, what happens basically, uh, what happens basically, 
uh, if something happens, then that police people go there and they start, okay, uh, checking the footage, uh, video footage of that uh, particular time and then try to identify who was the culprit or who was the uh, person, who, main culprit person and so on. So instead of that one, why don't you go in reverse way? Like for example, you have the images and if you, okay, do the analysis of that videos or images in advance and then give the warning to that doctor, police person that something is going to happen because suspicious activities are going in that location. So before happening that okay, incident, that police people will reach there and then take the appropriate action. So we can avoid the further damage and so on. So this is possible with the help of machine learning and so on. So by giving the smart security, okay. So not only this one, this kind of cameras, but the drone cameras can be also used and then whole database or whole videos will be analyzed with the help of machine and then automatically this warning will be given to the uh, police department and then police department will take the appropriate action well in advance rather than happening uh, okay after taking action after happening the events and so on. So this is one of the key uh, application which will be really useful for the human being in future and so on. Then machine learning can be used in biometrics like that way. See that uh, <clears throat> you might have seen that simple fingerprint, fingerprint biometrics which is used many times even uh, entering in your college you have to do the um, biometric login and so on. Okay, Though these things are there, this is well known technology and you know that there is a separate center of bi uh, fingerprint analysis at CMC Hyderabad, which is headed by uh, one of my super senior uh, from IIT Karakpur, uh, Babu Mehtre was uh, heading that or uh, that center, okay, uh, CMC Hyderabad, uh, which is working in that. Two years back, uh, one year back, okay, uh, my okay, my team and a team from COAP was invited at IIT Bombay by Professor Gatre, Vikram Gatre. And he also invited the police people from Bombay as well as other uh, this one. And then one day workshop was conducted there. And then he asked the police department that can you pose the problem? What kind of problem you are facing from security point of view or any other point of view and so on. So that we as an engineer, we can solve that problem. So one of the police, okay, uh, uh, this one officer was telling that you have developed the technology based on the fingerprint. But actually this technology is, has a limited use in practical application. Like for example, if something happens at some places, if some theft happens at some places, and there are four or five thieves which are, okay, which, which were there to break the uh, latch and so on. So that four or five thieves, okay, when they are trying to break that latch, okay, you don't find the very nice fingerprint because many fingerprints are overlapped. So you have only partial information available. Now, the present technology does not support for the partial information. So you might have seen that, you might have observed that, okay, when you put your fingerprint, sometimes you are not identified. You have to ask, okay, put your fingerprint clearly, and then after that, it will be identified. But when you go practical side, okay, uh, um, means uh, the place where that theft has been happened, so you get the partial information. So can you develop the technology which will recognize the person only on a partial information? So that is the rate need of power. So definitely uh, <coughs> identifying the person based on the biometrics, uh, there is also one of the uh, machine learning or um, uh, deep learning algorithms are very, very useful. Uh, so maybe uh, iris or maybe fingerprints or maybe your face recognition and so on. So where machine learning and so on, uh, deep learning can be used. Then uh, you might have heard that nowadays, okay, already research is going on to develop the driverless car. Now, driverless car, uh, I have read that, okay, you're going to develop the 100% driverless car. Okay. Because you see, if you follow everything, then your car will not move. Yeah, okay. With 100% accuracy, your car will not move because everywhere there will be obstacles and then your car will stop there. So you have to design the car with 99.7% accuracy, then it will run something like that. And so, so it was uh, the article which I read. Uh, in that it was mentioned and so on. Uh, okay, so driverless car or even like, for example, the roar, uh, 
uh, which is sent on the moon or which is sent on the Mars and so on. So it is also driverless car, so uh, driverless and so on. So definitely in that machine learning or deep learning algorithms are used for autonomous driving, developing the autonomous driving and so on, right? Then machine learning can be used in various industries like automotive industries or food and beverage industries or manufacturing or pharmaceutical or hospital or life sciences or human or insurance and so on. Uh, oil industries like that way see that IBM has uh, developed the technology which will identify the rock where there will be oil, oil below that rock. So earlier human being, human expertise was used for, okay, uh, identification of the rocks, but same thing can be done with the machine learning or computer vision application and uh, the scale can be increased. Like for example, earlier only 200 rock images were inspected by the human uh, expert, but now with the help of machine learning and AI, more than 25,000 images can be uh, inspected per day and the production can be used, uh, increased and so on. So machine learning and uh, can be used in AI, uh, oil industries. Then in future, definitely, uh, hiring process can be screening of hiring process can be done with the help of AI and machine learning. Okay, so you don't have to uh, take the test and something like that automatically. Or uh, like for example, these are the high uh, okay electricity towers are there, high power electricity towers are there. Or you might have seen that now wind windmills are there. So windmills height of windmill is very very high, or the blades of windmills are very large. Now. To do the maintenance of that high power, uh, this uh, towers and so on, uh, okay, that person has to climb and then check and so on. So it is very difficult. So can we capture the images with the help of drone and then identify is there any breakage, is there any damage, is there any corrosion and so on. So these things can be identified, inspected with the help of drone and then drone can be, uh, drone images can be sent to the machine learning algorithm and machine learning will tell whether is, okay, is there any preventive maintenance needed for uh, this one. So uh, machine learning can be used there. So this is that way. Not only that towers, but in bridges also. Uh, then, uh, okay, segmenting, analyzing the candies and seeds, machine learning can be used. Or uh, machine learning in retail application, like for example, uh, uh, automated supermarkets is one of the uh, latest trend and that is come, okay, uh, powered by computer vision or visual search on smartphone cameras, uh, which gives the reset of information related to the object of interest and so on. Uh, this is very uh, good uh, example that machine learning for social cause. Like for example, the person who is blind, he cannot see. Now, Microsoft has developed the app, which is called as a seeing AI Microsoft app. So just what he has to that, uh, that blind person has to hold the camera, okay, or hold the mobile. Mobile camera will capture the images or videos, and then that app will, okay, uh, demonstrate what is what kind of scene is there like for example that a blind person is going uh, on the road so um, uh, that app Microsoft AI app seeing micro AI app will demonstrate that okay you are on this road and then what kind of vehicles are coming and then how much is the distance with which speed it is coming okay what kind of persons are coming and so on so he will get the help and like for example uh, this uh, uh the app narrates the world around you by turning the visual world into the audible experience and the app describes the people around you like for example this is 28 year old girl uh, or female wearing the glasses looking very happy or like for example he uh, that uh, blind person went to the conference room so this is the conference room uh whose number is 2005 and so on so basically it will take the image and it will convert that one into the audio so uh, this blind person can listen that one and uh, sense that one even like for example if that blind person goes to the supermarket or like that then he can hold the currency like and then he will come to know this is 20 rupees this is 100 rupees this is um uh, 2000 rupees and something like that so currency redeem can be possible with the help of that app or like for example that person would like to um, uh, take the uh, lease agreement and so on so that lease agreement will be uh, just kept on the below the mobile and then that mo uh, that seeing ai will read that lease is agreement line by line and then he uh, that blind person will listen and so on or if that blind person goes to the supermarket then he will uh, okay see what kind of uh, product is there what is the cost and what is the expiry date and so on what who is the manufacturer and so on so this app will really uh, helpful for the person those are visually impaired and so on 
So seeing AI uh, app from Microsoft is uh, just for social cause and so on. Now, another example uh, of this one, recent research which is carried out at University of uh, California, Berkeley. So they have uh, converted uh, one scene into another, like one, how cool is the convert an image from horse to zebra or zebra to horse or summer to winter or winter to summer and so on. Now, this is really useful uh, for, for in the entertainment industry, like for example, in entertainment industry, uh, you know that in uh, Hindi movie, Ajay Devgan, uh, he's the best actor, but he's not good dancer. And you know that the South Indian, uh, this one uh, dancer, Prabhu Deva, okay, he's very good dancer. Okay, Now, can Ajay Devgan dance like as a Prabhu Deva? Or can we transfer the motions or uh, moves of uh, Prabhu Deva directly into the video of Ajay Devgan? So this is possible with the help of AI and machine learning research, which is carried out by uh, University of Berkeley, okay, California. So anybody can dance. So I'll just show a video how this, okay, from the original expert motions will be ex okay extracted and the person who doesn't know anything about the dance he will start okay he, uh, his video will start dancing like as the uh, professional dancer and so on so anybody can dance uh, uh, is one of the this one so i'll, I'll just show you one of the uh, video which is of three minutes video so i'll just share that one Okay, just I'll share that video. Uh, is that video? Uh, uh this one screen is visible to you yes yes sir it is visible okay. sir so just i'll start that video so this is the target she, she doesn't know how to dance this is the expert who is from source so projects from the expert will be detected and these projects will be transferred to the target. So she will start dancing just like as this expert. She will start just dancing like this. So 
So you can transfer that motions not only one object but multiple objects also. So this is the original Bojasa detected and this transfers to target one, target two. So these two persons will start dancing like this. Okay, so <clears throat> so this is the research which is carried out uh, by University of California, Berkeley. Uh, now my slides are visible to you. Back to the slides. Yes, sir. Slides are visible, sir. Uh, fine. So, so uh, another application, there are several applications of machine learning for visual reality or even in uh, cloth fittings uh, or virtual uh, reality. Now, where, which are the sources or sectors where AI and machine learning will play a big role? Okay. So, healthcare is one of the important where AI and machine learning will play a big role. Agriculture, smart mobility, include transport and logistics or retail or manufacturing or energy, smart cities or educational and training and uh, educational training and skilling and so on. So, there uh, AI and machine learning will play a big role. Now, what are the challenges in this particular team? Okay, all those applications we have seen. Now, what are the challenges uh, in this uh, domain? So, you know that particularly in machine learning or artificial neural network, you are using the neural network. So, there are basically in, uh, this one uh, in input layer is there, output layer is there, and hidden layers are there, and so on. So, you have to train that neural network. Okay, so memory networks still requires large working memory to store the data and so on. So this is the major hurdle that machine learning need to overcome that. Okay, so for efficient and effective AI, find a better method for network to discover facts, store them and seamlessly access them when needed and so on. So a better network uh, are essential for making the breakthroughs in AI and machine learning. Uh, second, uh, challenge is that, as I said that, I gave the example that if some person want to go from uh, uh, Parbhani to Germany, and then that person knows only Marathi and uh, uh, the language is used in Germany, German. So you have to need, you need to transfer, uh, translate that language from German to Marathi and vice versa. So this is, okay, there are several languages available or world, not only all world, forget about the world, in the India itself, how many languages are there? So to convert one language into another language. So already work has been started, but a lot of work is needed to work, do in this field. So presently the success in natural language processing and understanding of the language is limited. And we have to increase this one by using machine learning and AI. So this is still a massive challenge for the deep neural network and so on. So presently we teach computer to represent language and simulate uh, reasoning based on that one and so on. So this is one of the area where one research can be carried out and so on. Then uh, attention, see that uh, as a human being, okay, we use for taking making the decision, we use the attention also. But in a machine learning, attention part is totally missing, which is not at all considered. So human visual system use the attention, uh, which is highly robust. Um, manner, okay, and which is this set of features, so which is totally neglected in AI and machine learning present in present situation. So currently, ML is all about 
focusing on small chunk stimuli like for example uh, okay we'll be focusing only on the images or uh, objects and so on or on the um, uh, audio part and so on so small chunks we are basically integrating and then finally we are making the decision so on but here attention is totally missing so for mammal machine learning to truly realize its potential we need a mechanism that works like as a human visual system to build into the neural network which will take care of attention and also uh, so that is one of the important challenge which is uh, required uh, which is uh, uh, this one uh, another thing is that you might have seen that in our class also there are students who learn very quickly and there are some students who okay take a lot of time they have to do the revision several times so whereas whereas some of the students are really intelligent student okay once they read that one like everything is fit in their memory and then they need not have to go back and again uh, do this one so they perform well but for some student they have to do repetitions or revisions and revisions and then after seven revisions they come to their performance means basically what we can conclude that see in human neural network also there are neural networks or brains which are one shot okay which learns on the one shot okay in one iteration or there are some neural networks which work on the several rotation so presently the neural network which are available okay requires lot many iteration to learn so why not to develop the neural network which will learn in only one iteration so that kind of neural network will make the major major breakthrough in the machine learning so currently unable to achieve one shot learning so traditional gradient network need large amount of data to learn iteratively so find the way to enable neural network to learn in just one or two examples or uh, one or two iterations and so on so that is another challenge third one is that see uh reinforced learning is used in supervised learning approach as well as un, um, uh, this one uh, deep learning is used in supervised learning approach as well as uh, unsupervised learning approach but very less uh, use of this um, uh, deep learning is made in the reinforced so why not to increase the deep learning approach in reinforced so that okay you can do the control of robots very uh, efficiently and so on right then segmentation challenge semantic segmentation is one of the challenge see a, a, a segmenting individual component or individual object is fine but segmenting based on the semantic information is one of the challenge and that can be overcome by using machine learning and uh, deep learning and so on then another challenge is that see presently we are using simple images for training like one lakh images are there which are used for uh, objects uh, images are there and which are used for training or in uh, audio samples are there which are used and so on but have you okay seen that somebody has used videos for training purpose like for, for example if i show you like for example in 2006 i visited uh, university of barcelona spain computer vision center for collaborative research work and so on so if i tell that one with the help of words you'll get limited knowledge but if i show the picture of that computer vision center of barcelona you'll get more information but instead of that one if i show you a video of that uh, computer vision center of barcelona you'll get much more information means see that uh, this is a common phrase in image processing that image speaks thousands of words instead of telling in words if you show the picture you'll get more information but instead of showing the picture if you show the video of one minute you'll get much more information so videos okay speaks thousands of sentences so presently in machine learning we are using only audio or image data for training purpose can we make the use of video data for training purpose it will give you more accuracy than only image and uh, uh, this one so uh, uh, utilizing the video training data itself instead of static images or allow ml system to learn by listening and observing the dynamic world for better results and so on right uh, then object detection is another uh, area where okay one can work uh, 10th challenge is that privacy concern uh, at ai technology see nowadays everybody is using like for example if you have the uh, apple iphone so you have uh, siri assistant is there siri assistant is there in apples or if you have amazon's alexa or google assistant is there if you are keeping all those gadgets in your room then can you give a guarantee that these gadgets the recorded data will not be used uh, or um, uh, it may be okay um, uh, used 
uh, uh, unauthorized uh, things in unauthorized things or so like for example so there may be a threat for your privacy and so on because you don't have the guarantee that this data which is collected by these assistants and gadgets uh, which is okay uh, which will go to the web and then uh, we don't know what what kind of uh, uh, things are happening with that data we don't know about that one so privacy is one of the important thing um, uh, okay, if you are going for AI related technology and so on. Now, what is the future of this machine learning and so on? What kind of things may happen in the future? So, uh, you may, okay, uh, in search itself, you get the fine tuned search with the help of AI and machine learning technology. So, better search algorithms will be there. Nowadays, you have this Google search algorithm, but better, okay, better than that by using machine learning and so on, you'll get this one. You have a of the data, like for example, you'll get the no code environment. Like for example, machine learnings will write the code for a given situation. So they, you don't need a software engineers to write the codes for a given situation. Machine learning algorithms, okay, given the facts and given the situation, machine learning algorithms would be able to write the codes for that one. So software engineers will be no more needed in the future. Okay, so now uh, then rise of quantum computing. See that. Uh, machine learning and computer, com, com, quantum computing, if they come together, with the help of quantum, com, quantum computing, your processor speed will increase, accelerated learning will happen, increased capability will be there. So combination of AI machine learning and quantum computing will make the world so fast and so on. Then <coughs> AI in retail and this one, uh, supermarkets will be widely used or more healthcare, facilities will be available because nowadays nuclear families are there. So a uh, person will be connected to everywhere. Uh, his data will be available and then more uh, case, uh, this one quick uh, services you'll get uh, as early as uh, possible. So more healthcare, accurate, uh, accurate healthcare will be there. Now, so to, to study this <coughs> subject, uh, or do the research. So there are several good journals available, like for example, ITP Transition on Pattern Analysis and Machine Learning Tales, PAMI, then ITP Transition on Neural Network and Learning System, or ITP Transition on Image Processing, ITP Transition on Multimedia, ITP Transition on Medical Imaging, Journal of Learning, Machine Learning and Research, or Interaction Journal of Computer Vision, or Journal of Artificial Intelligence, Pattern Recursion, Image Vision and Computing. So these are elsewhere, these are ITP journals available where research is presented. And then there are important conferences where research work is published. CVPR is the topmost conference in this field. So I IEEE Computer Vision and Patternization, or ICCV International Conference on Computer Vision, or ECCV European Conference on Computer Vision, or ICIP International Conference on Image Processing, or IEEE International Conference on Patternization. So these are the topmost conferences where research work related to this field is published. And there is one more Indian conference, which was name is ICVGIP. This conference is generally organized by IIT after every two years. So this has been started in 1995 with the name of ICPIC. My professor, Professor Bian Chatterjee, who was my supervisor, he started that conference at IIT Kharagpur. And now this name has been changed uh, with the ICVGIP. Uh, Indian Conference on Computer Graphics. It's not international. It is an Indian Conference on Computer Graphics, Image Processing, and so on. So this is conference is generally organized. Like for example, if this year, if it is in North, then next after two years, it will go to the East. Then next two years, uh, it will go to South and then West. So like that way, uh, it is organized. So in various IIT, you can attend those conferences. And I wish all the best to you. So over to you, if you have any questions. I'll be Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So myself, Masrat Begum, on behalf of Computer Science and Engineering Department, would like to thank you, sir, for sparing your valuable time with us, sir. We are very fortunate to have you with us, sir. Okay, thank you, sir. Thank you for enlightening us with the uh, different topics like machine learning, deep learning, and artificial intelligence for sharing with us very knowledgeable things like how supervised, unsupervised learning can be done and how AI and machine learning is on the rise in the market. Okay. Uh, like uh, how the power of machine is increasing, the storage cost is reducing day by day and how we can use more amount of database as it is growing exponentially. 
now we'll be having more clear idea about how we can get many jobs in this area uh, so we are very much delighted to have you with us sir thank you so much for sparing your valuable time thank you sir thank you so much now i would like to ask participants if they have any queries okay so uh, so here sir we have two queries can i ask sir sure, sure. Uh, yeah sir could you put some light on like uh, how avenues to be used in agricultural sector in indian uh, in india okay or in indian condition right sir? okay so basically see that uh, one of my research scholar is working uh, agriculture domain particularly we have a mou with agriculture university and uh, how this ai and machine learning can be used in agriculture like for example uh, uh, this one uh, identification of various species online okay uh, identification and uh, not uh, see but the, the application can be developed just in the mobile um, also because every uh, uh, this one um, farmer is having a mobile so basically by taking the photograph of that particular um, crop uh, he will identify okay he will be able to identify whether that crop is suffering with any kind of disease and then not only that one okay uh, the uh, app will be also able to tell okay what kind of uh, this one uh, pesticides or uh, this one um, uh, medicines can be used for to cure that one and so on uh, then weed identification or automation of the agriculture uh, this one so in many applications uh, um, uh, this uh, ai and machine learning can be used in agriculture sector so there are several applications any other question please yes sir thank you sir thank you sir so one more query is there sir uh, like which is the uh, test tool to implement algorithm in deep learning is it a python or matlab or r tool uh, basically i'll suggest that you go with python rather than matlab python yeah. okay sir right sir thank you sir is there any other queries okay oh, participants any queries Okay. Okay. okay sir thank you sir thank you very much for your session on this topic sir thank you sir thank you so shall i take leave yes yes sir yes sir you can leave now thank you sir thank you So today uh, we have a hands-on session on the Python from uh, doc, uh, from Mr. Abdul Rahim sir. So he will be taking the things on Google Collaboratory. So hope everybody is ready with the Google Collaboratory. I hope everybody is uh, having uh, started with the things. So he, it is his uh, second session. So hope everybody get the knowledge about the things. So I request Abdul Rahim sir to start his presentation. Over to you, sir. Abdul Rahim, sir. Hello, Abdul sir. Hello. Hello. 
इज इट ऑडिबल सर चले सर ही इज अनम्यूटेड हेलो सर आई हैव ऑलरेडी मेड यू एज ए प्रेजेंटर इज इट ऑडिबल माई वॉइस कैन एनी वन कन्फर्म अब्दुल रहीम सर यूर वॉइस इज नॉट ऑडिबल so just 2 minutes to go so there is some uh, i can call as a voice problem here so just within a few minutes sir will be joining once again back so there is a little bit mic problem with the saran so soon he will be joining please just wait for few seconds
very uh, uh, very good afternoon to everyone am i audible i guess uh, dhananjay sir Okay, yes, sir. Sir. Yes, sir. Audible. Audible. Okay, okay. Thank you. Yeah, thank you, sir. And uh, sorry for the inconvenience to everyone. And uh, just of all, uh, as we we are having a session on uh, machine learning and its uh, algorithms. So before starting the session, uh, let me just convey uh, what is machine learning and uh, how we are going to implement it. And with a new technique, maybe uh, we have learned machine learning uh, from either from a tutorial or from some other basis and all. But in today's session, we'll be learning uh, uh, machine learning in a very different format by using uh, a cloud platform, which is called Teachable Machines. By using that, we can add our models and as well as it will be a pretty much easy way to understand how, what is the actual concept of machine learning? So in today's session, uh, as uh, we have already discussed about this one, uh, I mean, uh, with the faculties and all, like we'll be having the whole session from now, uh, it will be on machine learning itself. So we need to understand the basic part first, then we can go for implementing the higher level of algorithms, something like TensorFlow, CNN, and uh, deep learning concepts and all. So, <clears throat> uh, as already uh, 14 minutes have been passed, so without wasting the time, let me just start. So, uh, machine learning is actually one of the type of artificial intelligence that is going to allow us to uh, create software applications that are going to predict the uh, values or that is going to predict the future of those applications so the values will be taken from the historical data something like suppose uh, one of the uh, famous data set that we do have uh, that uh, we do have in our uh, world that is fisherman's iris data set that is being used uh, around the world uh, for working in machine learning and it has been already inbuilt in python libraries directly so first of all, uh, as this was just a short introduction and we'll see much more deeper things in, uh, in our coming session that is, we'll just directly start with our machine learning tutorial. I mean, So first of all, sir, we will be having a uh, teachable machines, which has been provided by Google, uh, where we will be learning a lot of new things like what is the actual concept. So first of all, let me just uh, tell you all like something. If I would have been supposed something like if the laptop was invented 50 or 100 years back, then no one could have understood the proper uh features or what it is because at that time no one was there to introduce laptop nor the smartphones nor any any new technological things suppose if i would have invented something uh which was not understandable by our brains a heavy word that was not understanded uh by our brain so likewise uh until and unless we go for training our minds we will be not capable of understanding that kind of a thing. <clears throat> and uh, the thing that we need to uh, get up into this machine learning concept is we are up here just for prediction purpose because machine learning concept is allowing us to predict the future or predict the application's future values based on our the historical da data that we are going to provide. Suppose if you are having, suppose a simple example to be understand it, is suppose we have a hospital, uh, something which is going to uh, cure 
cancer detections so i mean uh, cancer disease so maybe there are many people those who have uh, gone to the hospital and they are uh, making some regular checkups and all so they will be having their tests like crp ecg and many more tests they will be tested on them uh, to cure their diseases so what we will do we will take that kind of, will take that data from the hospital and will write some sort of algorithms and based on those algorithms we will allow the user i mean the doctors to predict whether the uh, i mean the patient is going through which stage of cancer or whether he has cancer or not just by adding those inputs to our uh, algorithms by using the data set and first of all this is our teachable machines that we need to understand teachable machines this is one of the concept that was invented by um, uh, google itself just for people to learn and understand machine learning in a very proper and simple manner because we we basically have uh, made up in our mind like uh, many of the people i mean we think that machine learning is a, is a huge concept and we cannot understand it in a one go or either in one or two hours or three hours so we can understand the concept but implementation can be will be taking more than one two or three or four months also so based on that so here we are just up here to understand the concept of machine learning and we'll just start what are the basic uh, features of machine learning that are going to exist and first of all we need to understand how we are going to train the model and test the models the models are nothing but the data that we will be providing so first of all we'll be doing the two concepts uh, first we'll be training the models and we'll be testing it whether the prediction is correct or not so we can do it just we will be going to our teachable machines and here they have provided a lot of uh, uh, i mean examples like how you can understand the things and uh, they have provided you can go through different modes either from images either from uh, sound or either from even poses also And over here, uh, we can start it from images, we can start from either sounds and we can even start from poses also. But the basic concept we'll be starting with is, we'll start with our first, uh, I mean, we'll start with images and we need to just click on get started. If we do have an existing project, we can open it either from the drive or either from we can open it from a file also first of all we learn how to create a data uh, i mean uh, how to create a project and from there we'll train and test all the models and we'll see how we can implement that also so here we they have provided three options one is image project audio project and post project we'll just move on with image project you can select the standard image model to be used and uh, here they are basically providing a number of classes that we can add suppose uh, I mean uh, maybe there are some different kinds of data sets that we can use suppose there is uh, models of cars or uh, year, uh, what year they have been uh, introduced and what year how many years they have gone through uh, on the road and all these things we are just defining that what kind of a data can a car has so over here i'll be defining my uh, own uh, classes and to those classes i'll be training them and i'll be providing the data with my images or either from the webcam itself directly and uh, we can just start from our creating our classes that is class one 
we need to have basic at least two classes to train our model and uh, after that we can uh, if you want some more models also to be added then we can keep on adding those models first of all i'll just rename this class um, this class as victory course and i'll name this class as uh, thumbs up pose and i'll be adding one more which is going to say thumbs down pose so i have basically created here three uh, classes one is victory pose thumbs up pose and thumbs down pose the first thing that uh, the machine is going to ask is for to upload our data on which basis I'll be testing and predicting what kind of data it is. So first of all, we need to open our webcam and we can train our model. So this is a victory pose that we are adding. And on this, I can directly add some sort of victory signs. And we need to just, you can see a hold to record. I'll be just holding it, holding it to train our model. So I have taken 219 images for uh, this one. And next thing what I can do is, okay, I'll be posing up for thumbs up and I'll be training some sort of thumbs up actions. Okay, 252 will be enough. And the next thing I'll be uploading thumbs down images too. Okay, 190 images. Now, once we have added all the three classes, now this is going to ask us to train our model. This is asking to train our model. So before training, we need, we need to provide at least 10 of the samples for all the three classes. Victory, uh, victory pose, thumbs up pose and thumbs down pose we have to add at least 10 10 but i have added more than 10 10 so even you people can add more than uh, 100 images so that we can get a proper prediction to our data okay after this we'll be just clicking on train model it will take some amount of time to train all the three uh, classes but once it is done, then we are ready to go and we can predict directly. You must not leave this tab open to train your model. So this is starting with 50-50 uh, images and it will train all the uh, uh, three uh, things all at once. And on the left, on the right side, it is showing export your model or either it is saying some sort of things. And now the webcam is on and I'll try to do some sort of uh, predictions over here. And this uh, over here is victory pose that I had trained some sort of images for victory pose. I had given uh, thumbs up poses and thumbs down poses. So here automatically this is predicting as thumbs down suppose if i'll do this you can see the accuracy level of predicting the model victory pose this images i had given in victory pose suppose if i'll take both of my hands
because this sign has been predicted in our victory images so this is going to understand i mean our machine is going to understand that this is a victory pose and suppose if i'll give thumbs up you can see the prediction label is so accurate that it is giving the exact results now you can see the accuracy level is 100 percent which is displaying thumbs up pose and if i do take two thumbs and this should work properly and if i do take thumbs down now the accuracy level is thumbs up thumbs down thumbs up so in this way and if i do take this one this is working pretty much fine for our example and we we can now we are ready we have already trained the model and we can now input i mean we can add this to our next uh, expected data like we can proceed this and we can take the model and work in our machine learning so this is the basic concept why i am showing you all this is because maybe many of us will be in an if we talk about imaginary world then we are not going to understand suppose if we are going to talk about some deep learning tensorflow so these are two heavy words to be understandable by our brain so if we go for understanding the things which are being seen or which are being uh, already worked on then our mind will be uh, very easy and it will be a very easy aspect to understand the topics in a much clear way so this is done now i have i have provided all the inputs and it is also predicting the exact uh, results for our uh, i mean uh, uh, for our model and this you can see that if i am sitting quite also uh, without uh, doing any uh, positions and all even though it is taking a uh, thumbs down so what we can do we can do some sort of one more class we can create one more class which will say no pose means I'll be not doing any sort of poses then I'll be training I'll do nothing there will be no poses in this okay we are now ready to train so that because this is uh, displaying a uh, wrong data because even though we are not doing any sort of thumbs down pose still it is displaying thumbs down uh, and with the hundred percent accuracy Here it is. When I'm sitting idle, then it should display that there is no pose that I'm giving. If I'll give thumbs up, thumbs down, victory. So all the uh, predictions are being working perfectly fine. So by using this model, we can either export, we can either export it or either we can choose some different uh, I mean methods to work on this the first method that we need to understand I mean we'll be adding all these things with an export model we'll just click on export model and 
uh, here you can see that all these things are being worked on tensorflow.js. TensorFlow is one of the open source framework that was built by, uh, I mean, Google to work on machine learning very easily. So there are many concepts. Uh, now they are even supporting CPU as well as GPU uh, for TensorFlow. And by using those TensorFlow, we can come up and work on um, uh, projects like image classification, video classification, and even checking out whether the images are being broken on which uh, i mean uh, uh, on which frame and on which uh, corners they are broken and we can uh, try to fix all those by using tensorflow.js and many more classification as well as visualization uh, i mean predictions can also be done by using tensorflow.js and one more uh thing over here you can see export your model you can either share it by exporting your model link directly to the web they'll provide you with a shareable link and we can add that and the below part over here we do have the javascript part we can add and we can add it into our local machines also and we can run and work on this models so the most famous nowadays that is pypy.js we can work on pypy.js also just we need to provide uh, here they have already provided the pypy.js web editor also so we'll just click on this so here is our pypy.js code that they have provided and suppose if you are doing some sort of online work and all based on our image classifications or uh, working on sounds and all or different kind of poses we can even add and work on pfi.js by using the link that they have provided and see over here if i run this one now they have provided the default link over here they have provided the default link which is saying that daytime night time and they'll, they'll be predicting when there is night and when there is day so over here i don't want this to be uh, done in this way because we have already trained our model so i'll just click on upload my model and wait for yeah, I, i'll wait for getting the link for our model that we have i mean created and over here now we got once we upload it uh, to the cloud directly now we got our shareable link we can copy this shareable link and open our p5.js and over here in the https teachable machine uh, with google i'll just replace this link with uh, our link that we have created and you can see that all the images will be appearing over here once i run this one uh, not all the images but we can get all the classes that we have added something like if i click on run you'll be seeing the data over here you can see there is no pose no pose class has been uh, is being running this is the victory pose thumbs down thumbs up so this is no pose and we can download this one directly in as a model also and we can work on these models and there is an option that they have provided that is download and download my model a zip file will be downloaded which is going to allow us to 
show in folder this is tm my image model i'll just extract this extract all and metadata will be containing all the i mean if you are trying to run this in our local machines what tensorflow version should be present i mean this is tfjs is nothing but tensorflow javascript version and this is tensorflow version and package version all th all the packages should be matched then we can run this into our local machines and the model names that we have provided it was victory pose the classes thumbs up thumbs down and as well as you no know, pose with the image size of 224 pixels all the metadata is being provided in this file and the next file will be containing all the all the images that we have trained all the shape it will automatically generate uh, itself into shapes and it will uh, add itself into an json file and it will store it over here we can use this model and we can work into our local machines also and this is the basic keras uh, library that we can use and we can even save and download the model based on our keras models this by using this code also they are they are also providing the code also we can take this code and we can work on keras and we can even add this um, i mean model or uh, this data set that we have trained into our kaggle or even jupyter notebooks or even into our uh, i mean uh, google collab also and this tensorflow light will be for the application that will be building for our by using our android tf light android and this will be for coral so all the supporting packages should be present then we can be working on this and the next uh, this is a simple understanding of how we are going to write our model how we are going to train our model and how we are going to understand the overall concept of machine learning and after this uh this was the one way we can do it by using our we can even add a new project again and the same way we can understand by typing or giving the same voice samples this time we will be uh adding voice samples also we can uh, if we are possible we can play games with uh, the students uh, to those we are trying to make them understand by providing their names by the name of classes and by uh, uploading the data of their voice and we can predict who is speaking a lot of speak uh, speaker recognition projects have been uploaded so the best example that we can uh, know is google mic okay we are speaking to google uh, they have used this project in the whole uh, I mean uh, uh, alphabet company itself in the Gmail they have I mean uh, in the YouTube they have provided in the Google search they have provided and in all the applications that they are using uh, they ha they are using this uh, speaker recognition function we can add passwords we can add locks to the screens to the Android phones by using this speaker recognition for i mean uh, uh, library and likewise they they have they are even provided they have even provided the pose based on the poses that we can give we can allow posenet.com uh, sorry not, uh, okay there is uh, they can we can uh, we have to stand for this one and we can add all the pose samples to our class and we can recognize suppose uh, this can this kind of uh, posing posing project can 
help you understand the people who are deaf and we can use them uh, for our uh, uh, you know uh, for teaching purpose for making them trying to understand the actions those who are uh, deaf who cannot understand the things so we can we can uh, create this kind of uh, projects by using these uh, examples of images and all so this was all about teachable machines and a lot of projects and we can just create it up with a fun environment and we can uh, play with the students as a weekly activity or even at home also with our uh, I mean uh, children who can who uh, to whom we are trying to understand to make them understand the technology any questions uh, regarding this one sir Hello. Yes, sir. Hello. Yeah, there is one question. Yes. Can we use teachable machines for video processing? Uh, sorry, sir. They have not provided teachable machines for uh, video processing yet. Yeah. Another question which is posted here is, sir, can this be customized? Yes, sir. Surely we can customize all the. Uh, I mean, uh, just we need to gather the uh, data. That's it. We uh, the things that I have shown was customize itself, sir. I haven't done anything over there. I had just created and uploaded my data, and they are just providing the platform to uh, make us understand the things. That's it. We can customize okay. it. We can either use those. Uh, I mean, I have downloaded over here the image model. I can use that and I can customize it any way that I want. But we need a training table. So we have uh, got the training table and we can customize it, use it anywhere at any time. Okay, sir. Thank you. These were the two questions posted on chat box. You can okay, continue. Sir. Okay, sir. Thank you. So this was the concept uh, of basic. Uh, so this is all about teachable machines we can use and we can uh, do anything with this one so the main intention of showing this was to make us uh, I mean uh, uh, understandable things regarding machine learning because uh, we have a lot of confusion regarding machine learning because some people talk about different kind of machine learning algorithms when to use way to use all the things are going to collaborate in our mind and at that time we think that machine learning is too uh, vast and we, we cannot learn machine learning in one go but we can understand machine learning in one go so this uh, i guess teachable machine will help us to understand the topic in more clear way and coming back to the uh, i mean basic things what are the basic things that we have to understand and uh, all the things uh, will be just proceeding sir i'll just close all the tabs so that we can work on And even we can uh, store our files also in directly into our uh, drive also and we can open and start working on the uh, project that we had left on. And now we will just continue with Google Colab. We need to understand some basic things regarding machine learning and those things can be understandable until and unless we do a hands on it on it so we'll just
so before learning uh, i mean before starting machine learning's basic concept we need to understand that we are going to work on the da data sets of our uh, the data that we are going to provide either an historical data or either the collaboration of the present and the past data for future prediction the main role of using machine learning is only for prediction purpose so there are a different kind of ways or uh, different kind of styles from where we can and different kind of algorithms libraries we can use and try to predict the uh, future future in the sense the terms which we are trying to uh, which we have provided in the uh, historical data okay sir uh, first of all the first thing that we need to learn in machine learning is what kind of data types do we use in machine learning okay first of all the data type that can be uh, analyzed by using our uh, machine learning is can be of a numerical data either it can be a categorical data or an ordinal data so first of all a uh, numerical data can be contained of as i had i had given a simple example of <clears throat> okay so as i had given a simple example regarding the iris uh, data that is present in the whole world and uh, the flowers data set that they uh, the fisherman has given in the data set is so exact because this flower is going to be generated uh, some different way in winter some different way uh, i don't know all about uh, like what and how we can uh, i mean grow that plant but the fisherman who has given the data set he has tested the flowers in all the seasons summer winter rainy uh, i mean all the seasons he has collaborated and tested at what time at uh, how much it will grow and how how much it will be uh, what color pigments it will get and all these things they have uh, given in the data set so either we can be working in the numbers something like what amount of pigmentation uh, color pigmentation it was uh, growed in one week so suppose it was 0 0.11111 something so likewise the data set that we will be using either uh, it will be either it can be a descriptive uh, data type or it can be a continuous data type descriptive in the sense suppose uh, suppose a child is growing from uh, suppose uh, he is uh, he is of the age of five years and what will be the a height of the child in the next year when he will be six so we can measure that thing we can measure that thing so for that we call as descriptive numerical data to be uh, added and uh, we can uh, measure the things basically in this for numerical uh, data type and one more data type uh, within numerical comes up with continuous data type something like we cannot predict the measures of the colors okay what color and how much color we cannot predict it because it all depends and there there are no such kind of measures to be me uh, measured in colors uh, or the something like uh, size of something uh, something like uh, you know uh, leaves and all there are different kinds of leaves around the world so in this way we 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 are going to categorize numerical then categorical and as well as ordinal data types that are being present in machine learning just a minute sir. okay so coming to the next uh, uh, data type that is categorical so in the categorical thing something like 
we are not at all going to measure the things itself something like if you are trying to count the stars we cannot count it so once an infinite value is being uh, come up into our uh, i mean um, site then at that time we call that as an categorical data type and one more that is uh, that is ordinal which can be uh, measured from one item to the another something the size of watermelons size of mangoes size of apples so they differ in their own predictions so we can directly uh, measure like which apple is big which apple is small so in this way we can understand all the uh, basic uh, needs of data types in our machine learning and uh, the three most important factor that we need to understand in machine learning first of all we need to understand the uh, modes of machine learning we can uh, sorry not modes we can call them as uh, basic grouping features also first of all we need to understand what is mean median and mode and how we are going to calculate all these things first of all if i am trying to calculate mean uh, we all know, uh, pardon me if uh, I do something wrong in mathematical equations because I am not so good in mathematical equations. So, mean is uh, actually um, an average value we can provide for all the arrays in machine learning. Something like if I have calculated uh, something like if I have given speed of number of vehicles something 100 comma 90 comma 80 comma 70 50 comma 40 suppose i have taken the speed of my, uh, vehicles so i am trying to find out what can be the uh, mean of all these speeds so i can just directly x dot we can find it out by using numpy.mean and we can provide it speed but before that we need to import import numpy import numpy and at last we can be printing all the values of x We can execute this one. So over here, uh, if I'm not uh, mistaking, we need to add all these things. We need to add 100, 90, 80, 70, 60, 50, uh, plus 40 and divide it by all the number of values that are present 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 7 number of values are present and we should divide the whole i mean by adding all the numbers and we should divide it by uh, 7 then i guess it will be 70 itself because uh, i may be wrong but the system i mean the machine is not going to be wrong and the next thing that we need to find out is uh, the median median values and to understand median we can copy the same thing because i don't want to waste the time on typings and the same thing will be median and we'll just execute this this is going to find out the import numpy median so this is going to find out the exact the middle value and it is going to display us then we do have <clears throat> 
some modes and all and for modes we need to understand some scipy things but uh, unfortunately it was not possible uh, on the last session we couldn't cover up uh, uh, some uh, basic libraries also okay so from scipy we'll be importing some stats and again speed equal to we can provide some different kind of speed this time and to find out the modes so uh, if we consider something like uh, to understand the concept of mode the value which will be repeated more number of times suppose if you want to display or we are trying to uh, suppose there is a data set of around uh, 1 lakh or 2 lakh uh, data in it so if you are trying to find out some duplicate values it is very huge task to understand like uh, we cannot go through all the 1 lakh or 2 lakh data set and try to fetch the same values okay so it is uh, a very uh, hectic work to be done by using manually so this scipy is going to allow us to retrain or to display the duplicate values and to those duplicate values we can remove or we can uh, alter them accordingly to our requirements so x equal to stats dot mood of speed And we can execute this one. Uh, we can see here that mode of result is being displayed that 86 is being repeated three times. We'll count it one, two, and it is being displayed three times. So this is a simple thing that we have to understand uh, for finding even some for finding of uh, standard uh, devi deviation, some variances and we can uh, even find out what kind of percentiles. Percentiles is also one of the good concept that we have to understand for our basics. First of all, we'll try to take some sort of number of uh, something like I'll try to import numpy first so that we'll be working on array and if I try to take ages of some different uh, I mean uh, amount of people from starting from 1, 2, 5, 10, 20, 50, 60, 70, 90, 88 so all these uh, I need to provide some sort of more data to it uh, so that we can get some accurate things. Okay. So over here I am just trying to fetch out if I try to give that if I want to check out what will be the 70 percent I mean 70 or 75 percentage of persons who will be having their age more than uh, something like uh, 75 or more than uh, 60 or more than 70 so I can predict that by using x equal to numpy dot percentiles ages and i'll just uh, give one age something like i want to predict the age of the people who are 
of 60. And print of x. So 52% of the people are having the age more than 60 in this uh, according to our this example. So if you if you if you want to try some different kind of a things like if you are trying to display some sort of random uh, uniform numbers. And we'll just work on this one so that we can understand the values first and we'll train it manually and we'll be displaying the future uh, and we'll do some sort of predictions also. And uh, suppose if I'll be taking some sort of numpy dot random uniform uniform which will be consisting from 0, 0 0.0 comma which will be having 5 and it will be having 250 sets print of x so this should display a uniform random arrays for us which will, which will be starting from uh, 2.4.7 means we are trying that it should start it should have five columns one two three four five and likewise we'll be providing all the data within the random uniform itself so we can display in this way and suppose if you are trying to display it within a data set suppose we are we are having a data set of around um maybe uh 100 or 200 or more than uh 250 of the data sets also so i'll just take the same thing and i'll try to display it within the histogram itself histogram is one of the uh, thing that we can add directly charts to be understandable by us so that we can predict the values directly and before that i want to import import matplotlib dot plot as plt and i'll take it after this itself plt dot hist and i want that it should be consisting of five columns and just display it plt dot And we'll execute it this time and over here we can see that the number of people those i mean the random number that we have taken is being displayed in the graph and according to this one it is going to display something like from 0 to 40 how many of the uh sorry the uh it is going to display the values which are being defined from uh, 0 to 1 then how many values are there so uh, it is something like starting from 40 to uh, I guess 40 or 38 it will be around and from values that are starting from 1 to 2 it is something like reaching to 70 uh, approximately not 70 but 68 or 67 and values starting from 2 to 3 it is uh, around 50 and values starting from 3 to 4, 49 I guess and 4 to 5 something like 48 or 45 or 46. So in this way we can allow the users to add the data uh, in the historical way also. Histor I mean histogram. And uh, we can display the data also in the format of scattering plots. We can even display the data import matplotlib dot 
and I'll be having uh, in a different way I will be displaying this one not in a histogram uh, x we taking two values x which will be consisting of uh, 5 comma 7 comma 8 comma 2 comma 17 comma 9 comma 4 comma 11 comma 12 comma 9 comma 6 okay this is the one uh, x value that I have taken now I'll be taking the value for y so that we can match the uh, histogram plot directly so over here I'll be taking 99 89 76 79 comma 75 comma 65 comma 85 comma 45 and uh, 95 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and 11 uh, y axis values that we have provided. And over here, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, and 2 more to be added uh, 87, 84. And now I guess we can match the values. And to this, we can provide plt dot scatter scatter and to this we can x comma y and to this we can just show out the output and run this one indentation error Sorry for this. I will execute this one. And in this way, we can assign the scattering of our variables. Uh, I mean the y-axis and x-axis x-axis so here you can see that uh, the values that I have provided each and every value is being scattered and being displayed only in the format of dot in this way uh, okay so now we'll be moving on with uh, some sort of uh, uh, other things I think basic is enough and we can uh, do a lot of things uh, if you get a lot of time even after later uh, uh, first of all I want to uh, I mean um, tell about what are the types of uh, machine learning that is uh, the machine learning can be divided into a different uh, I mean uh, four type of things basically it was three types before but they have now added it into something one more option in machine learning one is supervised learning second is uh, unsupervised learning and third is uh, semi supervised machine learning and fourth is reinforcement machine learning so we'll just go one by one like how we can understand all these things uh, first of all supervised learning is basically used for uh, i mean where we provide the input as well as the output to the uh, machine and we ask the machine to send us the input as well as output based on the previous data and it should predict so that kind of uh, things when we are doing with the machine where we are providing both the input as well as output data so we say that it is a supervised machine learning and suppose uh, something like we are trying to uh, say that uh, find the the best example that I had given we are trying to find the size of uh, apple we are trying to find the size of mango orange so different kinds of fruit or suppose some different kinds of eyesight eyes 
or cat dog height so in this uh, thing when we are trying to predict something we say that we are going to say this as a supervised learning okay when to use supervised learning this can be a uh, i mean pretty much uh, good question to be asked on this situation when we can use suppose once where we are trying to build an application something like we are trying to detect some sort of fraud okay some sort of fraud like uh, uh, someone has done some sort of uh, fraud in banking system so we can take that prediction and we can allow the users to uh, if someone is going into this format i mean uh, if they are having the same amount of uh, numbers as it was previously uh, i mean they had done the fraud so they can match it and they can create some sort of uh, accusations by using uh, this supervised learning and they can build an assessment learning uh, fraud detection spam filtering and uh, where classification as well as regressions are being given the more value something like uh, one simple example that we can understand uh, in this is suppose uh we are five members in the family i mean uh, i mean in the uh, we can take not members in the family we can take it in uh, uh, school itself suppose there are more than 5000 uh, students in the school and we are trying to predict who is going to go to a comedy event something the students who has the number of who has already watched comedy movies or who has some uh, fictions uh, i mean or sci-fi uh, kind of things so at that time they can uh, we can predict who is going to go to uh, the i mean uh, uh, the comedy show or not and likewise we can use many algorithms in uh, supervised learning that is linear regression learning simple uh, linear uh, learning decision tree and, and many more uh, algorithms can be used in uh, I mean, uh, machine learning and one of the best advantage of using supervised learning is suppose if we have a data set something like the data set that they have provided over here itself sample data and they have provided some sort of uh, data over here in uh, California housing test CSV so they have provided latitude longitude and where the house is facing each and everything they have provided and suppose we are trying to fetch the uh, output data for that so this kind of data set are going to come under supervised learning and we can add this and we can display the exact uh, values to be detected or predicted for these kind of uh, I mean data sets and if you are allowing the uh, biggest tasks something like a very complex kind of a task where we need to uh, train the data set a lot where we need to train the data set a lot at that time uh, we should not go for using some uh, uh, something like uh, supervised or any uh, we should go directly to unsupervised learning or reinforcement learning directly and uh, we can use supervised learning in image segmentation medical fraud spam or as well as we can use this in speech recognition also <coughs> <clears throat> and talking about unsupervised machine learning uh, suppose if you are trying to predict the data set or we are trying to predict the output into any of the supervision something like uh, the output is not into our minds also 
uh, something like which is going to be an infinite kind of an output at that time we can go for using unsupervised learning machine algorithms and before moving on to those uh, machine learning algorithms so we basically go for categorizing machine uh, unsupervised machine learning into uh, different uh, aspects one will be uh, clustering we we are trying to add all the data in a format of cluster we will be saying that it should add all the data in a format of clusters and it should display the output for us and we'll just see one of the output that we can uh, see in our historical data something if i try to add by using the sklearn we'll try to fetch out uh, the algorithm that i'll be using will be k nearest neighbor algorithm and by using this i can <clears throat> predict whether the which value is being to the nearest uh, part i mean those who are neighbors will come to know about this one and for this from sklearn dot neighbors uh i guess i had stored that file somewhere because this is a very lengthy program of uh, 20 to 25 lines Uh, Dhananjay sir, is there any possibility that I can uh, share the programs with you later? Uh, yeah, you can share it sir, uh, no issues. Uh, we, we, uh, we will send you the mail ID. Sir. Yeah, you can just send those programs, we will share with the participants also. Yeah, yeah sir, sure, sure sir. Okay, I will be just pinging out in your chat box sir, the mail ID. Okay sir. Okay. Okay, okay, sir. Thank you. Okay. Uh, okay. Uh, I guess this program is a very huge thing, but uh, we could have learned uh, different things uh, in this one, like uh, how we can predict the data uh, by using uh, one of the sklearn uh, algorithm, and uh, in supervised learning. We can we can add clusterings and we can add uh, uh, mean shift algorithm, DB scan algorithm, principal component, and many more com uh, algorithms can be used. And the basic uh, uh, usage of going for understanding the concept of uh, supervised learning, if we think that the data set is not at all labeled or it should be uh, i mean uh, it is something like a very complex kind of a thing at that time we should be going for understanding the uh, algorithms for unsupervised learning and where we can add all the uh, uh, unset data labeled values and we can uh, cooperate and we can make that into a label data set later on and we can make the predictions some sort of predictions that we can do is uh, if you are trying to build the application something like network analysis where we are going to identify the plagiarism or copyright in the document so that kind of uh, applications or recommending uh, uh, systems or doing some sort of anomaly or singular value or these kind of applications we can go for building it in uh, supervised learning and the simple uh, the third one that uh, we need to understand is uh, semi supervised learning so this is the concept that was not before but they have added it later on in, uh, in this uh, uh, concepts of machine learning where uh, basically it was only three kinds but now they have moved it to uh, four 
they have added semi supervised learning which is going the algorithm which is going to check out the values who are going to lie in between supervised and unsupervised machine learning so they are going to detect it and they are going to uh, overcome the uh, things that even supervised neither unsupervised learning can do okay and the last one uh, the last thing that we'll be having is reinforcement learning suppose we are having an uh, uh, something uh, where uh, suppose we have we have built a game where uh, we can take a good example of pacman pacman where a uh, smiley is going to eat the food which is in front of him so when the smiley is going to eat the food in front of him it is going to get some sort of rewards so those rewards can be calculated as for, for the agent directly into the uh, i mean uh, which is going to earn him more rewards something like the snake game that we used to play in nokia nokia mobile phone so when the snake used to eat some uh, food then it used to get bigger 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 and bigger so likewise the bigger the snake is going to become is the reward is the reward that has been given by for eating the food for eating the food and the negative things negativity that we can do something like uh, uh, suppose um, uh, if the snake is going to touch it to itself then it will die so these kind of negative patterns as well as uh, real world uh, games that we see a lot of uh, days nowadays that is um, famous games like uh, PUBG, uh, Call of Duty where we are trying to give an action for those actions we are going to get some sort of reward and these kind of applications something like uh, video games it is very much popular for video games for building video games uh, and uh, resource management and the most important <coughs> I mean field where reinforcement learning can be used is robotics nowadays it is highly used in robotics why because they are trying the uh, robots to try to uh, analyze the problem by themselves and solve the problems uh, on the same sequence itself so this is one of the uh, reinforcement uh, example where the applications are being built nowadays and text mining text mining where we are uh, uh, we are going to ask something like there is an some sort of image and within that image we do have some sort of um, uh, some some text and all so so we can call those text we can call those text and we can display it on our screen and I remember uh, we had built uh, uh, one of the example I mean one of the project based on uh, uh, reinforcement learning where a user is going to take the picture of the uh, bike number uh, uh, bike numbers that we are having so we have some uh, 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 something like ka28 uh, uh, emb something something so there will be a lot of confusion whether this uh, number plate is going to be uh, real or not maybe if you are having some sort of we had built it for one of the uh, i mean uh, students i guess so if the number plate we are going to take just a picture of that and through that picture the algorithm is going to read the text that is being written on the uh, i mean uh, uh, on the number plate so it will fetch the data and it will search accordingly we had added even the uh, django search the django text search uh, classification uh, into our uh, project where it is going to search whether the data is present in the data set or not so this was a very uh, good uh, example for sk uh, 
uh, I mean RL uh, uh, machine learning reinforcement learning <coughs> And uh, that's uh, that was it for uh, today's session from my side. And uh, uh, if you people have any questions, uh, you can just ask me, sir. So, any participant, uh, if you are having any query, please uh, you can unmute yourself and ask the question to. Uh, Abdul Rahim, sir. Sir, I'll just take the uh, email ID. Yeah, yeah. You can just. I have put it to personally the email ID, sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. I have taken it. And I'll be sharing the overall pro programs uh, in the evening. Okay, no After issues. Seven or eight. Okay, no issues. You can just send me to that mail ID, sir. We will be giving uh, to all the participants. Yes, sir. Sure. Thank you. Yeah. So, anybody with query? So, can just uh, put it in uh, to the rhyme, sir. Hello, sir. Uh, yes, sir. sir. I am Dr. Kannan. Uh, it's not query. One small request. If, if yes, possible, sir. please assume somewhat some percentage level that screen, sir. Uh, you are presenting at that time. Eh? Uh, sorry, sir. Uh, screen, eh? Possible, please assume some some big size. Uh, because very small it is sometimes so difficult to see. Okay, 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 sir. Okay. If possible, please, sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Sure, sure. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Sir. So I think there is no query from the participant. So I would like to thank from the bottom of the heart from the CSC department, GNDC Bidar. For Abdul Rahim sir for a wonderful hands-on session on machine learning and uh, letting us to know today what how the uh, teachable machines can be used actually it was a really a practical exposure to us also uh, for a new uh, people who are in the field of machine learning so thanks to Abdul Rahim sir and his team for a, a wonderful session today so with this note, uh, I, uh, Guru Prasad, right, signing off today's session. Uh, we will be sharing you the test link as well as I can call it as uh, uh, your uh, uh, content of uh, once we get from the Abdul Rahim sir to all the participants. So the test link will be shared soon in the WhatsApp group as well as it will be emailed to you. And the uh, link for tomorrow's session will be also mailed as well as will be shared in your WhatsApp group, right? Kindly uh, stay tuned. Thank you one and all. Uh, I, Guru Prasad, signing off. Thanks a lot, sir.